No, baby. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to MechAst Reacts. Today, we're watching some Nostalgia Critic videos. We're, well, maybe, maybe we'll only watch one. We'll see how long it takes for us to get through this. Um, we're starting Not off with long. Nostalgia Critic's clipless review of Jurassic World. Yep. And, uh, Which, by well, the way, was a movie that Alex ended up really enjoying after watching yeah, it all in full context. Yeah, because I actually I'd seen part parts of it before, and I was like, oh, this, this is okay. It's not not great. Uh, watch the whole thing in all in one sitting. I was like, you know what? That's pretty fucking good. And um, okay, Jurassic, so Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom. I still like. I like. The ideas in it, I feel like the execution could have been a little better, and the Fallen yeah. Kingdom was fucking great. Um, yeah. and, uh, not Fallen Kingdom, uh, Dominion. No, Dominion. Dominion was fucking great. Fallen Kingdom was the one that had that had some execution issues, but then yeah, but you said yeah, but you called Dominion. You called Dominion Fallen Kingdom. Yeah, I, I know. I I slipped up there, but yeah. Okay, um, so so do ex so what so do explain. In this whole thing, yeah, I was about to Doug, say you can go ahead and introduce us on this. Doug Walker, because... Doug Walker, or, or during his revival of, of his of the nostalgia critic character, since he was going to retire that after to boldly flee, he, he ends up of wanting to do oh, something to stick it to Hollywood, but who's been yeah. taking down his video. Yeah, because they were taking oh, down nostalgia being, critic despite... videos fairly often, and they were also like monetizing uh, sections of the video that weren't even their con. Excuse me, their content. So Doug, in retaliation, decides to break his rule of not wanting to review anything still in theaters and review Jurassic World. Old via a clipless sort of thing with both Malcolm Tamra with Malcolm Tamra Rob and whoever else he could rope into it yeah it's the it's the thing where they do like the skits but they dress up the uh you know his sidekicks yeah, and the runs as the, uh, explain the movie. <clears throat> yeah as the characters from the movie and then and use that as stand-ins for the clips that he would otherwise use for his other videos um because after yeah. the nostalgia critic came back he he um I remember watching the video back when it happened, and um, Doug stopped uh, having his cutoff time. I, mean, I think he had like a 15-year cutoff time, or 20-year cutoff yeah. time, whatever it was. And uh, he decided to stop doing that and just, you know, review whatever. And I think that that probably helped him out a yeah, lot, but, because... Yeah, but then, he, but then he said that he wouldn't review anything currently in theaters, and this movie was still in theaters. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of breaking his rule, all just for the sake of this. The one I also, haven't seen many, if any, of his clipless reviews. The only one I've watched is the Pixels one, uh, to my knowledge. Yeah, the Pixels one was very much Pixels. correct, right on the <laughs> right on the ball. But this one and Batman v Superman has some issues, and we're gonna go over those yeah. right now. Well, most so, Batman v Superman reviews have issues because somehow the people who make them don't actually watch the movie. Movie Bob. They, they're in the Movie Bob. Yes, Mo movie. Our review of Movie Bob's review got us taken down off of YouTube. I managed to get the video back, if I'm not mistaken, over on uh, Comics for All. But like, come on, Warner Brothers, come the fuck on. Anyways, yeah, you guys uh, are so, running yeah. out of money anyway. So, yeah. all right, so we're let's gonna... get started. Yeah. Ow. I forgot how loud. The, Why do you think fucking... I lowered the volume? Oh Jesus! Yeah, I want to lower it a bit. I'm taking, I'm taking this down. Don't bring me down, 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 down. I do like this little, uh, this little ooh, fan ooh, art ooh, over here. Unfortunately, the volume is independent for everybody. Yeah. I've yep. noticed. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Uh -oh. Nostalgia critic and things that happen. <laughs> I like hmm. how we get a kind of a uh, yeah hyper fangirls there. How we get kind of a snapshot of the time. 
from when this was made originally. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a really good right image. And the winner. And the winner. You know what? That's that's all right. That is not as good yeah, as that's the last a fair one. one. The Star Wars one was better. I, I bet that was a close second. You must go on. Joe must go on. DVD sucks and Blu-ray is better. Oh, wait. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. Didn't yeah. he re-upload re 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 the Cat in the Hat one? Well, this is why... This was why I liked Blip TV and Channel Awesome back in the day, because you could go on there and find the reviews without having to deal with well hang on i have that copyright i have bullshit. that dog i i had that dog when i was a kid it's very odd to see a a stuffed animal that you had it as, as a kid another version of it pop up in an internet video <laughs> oh yeah i remember that <laughs> oh yeah that movie the interview wasn't even that good, and the fact that North Korea threatened to nuke Sony over it was fucking pathetic. Yeah. Well, just like the leader. Why, yes. Yes, it would. I like how he says that with irony. And it's like, he looks directly into the camera and is like, yes, I know that that's the answer, but... This... It proceeds to be very biased. I mean, again, what did you do with... No, it hasn't. Doug, can you drop your voice just, like, maybe an octave? Wow, that's... I... I don't like his graphics. The I like his graphics for every... Okay, hang on. Doug, are you fucking kidding me? The dinosaurs looked fine. Yeah, and, and there are... And he says that there's nothing... There's no practical effects whatsoever when there uh, are some. I mean, granted, that could be like the Star Wars prequels thing where it's technically practical effects, but they've just digitally composited stuff together like uh, I mean, like, like, like the arena the at the end of uh, attack of the clone the arena at the end of attack of the clones is a real set it's just a miniature one which means that it's a digital composite which means that they might as well have just cgi'd the background anyways it doesn't matter like yeah <clears throat> and we'll get we'll get to that when we get to it but like <clears throat> you know we watched all six of the jurassic films back to back to back didn't we uh, not entirely, because well, not we had to wait a while. One, yeah. no, we, we had, had to wait a while for Dominion to come out. Yeah, because Dominion, and when we had to wait for Dominion to come out on Blu-ray, but still, like, we watched the first five Jurassic films all together, and, excuse me, they, they looked fine. I, I have a pretty yeah. good eye for this kind of thing. And, uh, like, hell, even, excuse me, even when I watched Jurassic World at the time, I thought it looked fine. Like, like I, you know, I had a shitty... Um, I had a shitty screener copy that I got, but, but it was, you know, it didn't, the CGI dinosaurs didn't look bad. No. Like, if you want to, if you want to talk about oh, bad and, CGI, um, we could go and talk Alex, about Ant-Man on the Lost Before we go on, Alex, before we go on, note that 
that uh, Tamara dressed up as Bryce Dallas Howard looks very sexualized compared to the actual film. That's yeah, yeah. I mean, well, the, the, have you and seen that poster? On... By the way, have you seen that poster where they uh, reduce the size of Bryce Dallas Howard's ass? Right, but here's the thing: Doug Walker sometimes complains about oh, how Michael right. Bay yeah. using goes... being sexual sexualized people yeah well to sell his movies and i'm like doug you are sexualizing one of your actors yeah at least i don't have a problem with it it's just stop being a hypocrite yeah anyway let's continue no i've so i've actually seen movies where the cgi looks like cardboard cutouts like you're on the wrong track It's a. It's called a viewmaster. Viewfinders are the things you had in cameras back in the day, Doug. It was right on the fucking viewmaster. You. It was in the footage. You could have dubbed this over in post, Doug. What are you doing? Yeah. What? That the joke doesn't even fucking work. It doesn't. Out of the entire, out of everybody in the Friends cast, he was like the best actor. He claimed. Well, uh, okay. So here's the thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause this real quick. So I understand what he's trying to say here. Like they're. In Alien 3 and Alien Resurrection, for instance, um, they have a guy in, in an alien suit. They just painted over it with so much CGI that you couldn't fucking tell. Yeah. Like, mm. like a, a, and in parts of Alien 3, they had him running around a fucking green screen rather than actually on set because they hadn't figured out what the alien was going to look like. Hell, um, the, the prequel to The Thing that they made it, like, 13 years ago, I think it was. Um, they had pretty good practical effects. Speaking of which, if you want to talk about uh, effects that look like, you know, look pretty fucking flat, just go go ahead and look at the Thing prequel. But yeah, the Thing prequel, they had a practical monster on set. It was like animatronics and all kinds of shit. And then they see oh, it over it because they decided where, to change. Um, you know that right. scene where Vincent D'Onofrio is Oh, wants to make, wants to actually touch one of the raptors. These beasts There's could like, replace thousands of troops on the ground. He King, actually, all right, Kingpin. Like he could act. Like those were actual props they built for that. Yeah, that I, I remember seeing some behind the scenes where they had, and like the the dinosaur heads, and like the I think it was the upper torso. Uh, this Doug, has been like ten gonna, years since I saw that. Uh, point, granted, point is, Doug. If you're going to complain about this, at least do your fucking homework. Well, at this point in time, the move, those featurettes weren't out, I don't think. So you can't yeah, really... But, he's, but, I mean... Uh, I don't know. Anyway. anyway. The muzzle cage. a bit much, don't you think? Things, even if they look kind of fake, we want them to do cool things, right? They do. Well, I'm gonna take that argument and uh, store it away here for later, because trust me, they'll come back in in a bit of time. But let's actually get to the story. Now that the park has been open, Doug, do you bite your tongue a lot? Have gotten too used to dinosaurs. Seems like it. Because I'm pretty sure it's probably a. Because this is something that really irritates me about some people. Like, I, I bite my tongue sometimes, and I have to take extra care to pronounce things without slurring my words. And I also, like, when I had braces on, the uh, the brackets inside of my braces scarred the hell out of my tongue. So I have to overpronounce my words sometimes so that I'm not blurring my fucking tongue all over the place. Doug seems to me like he's somebody who bites his tongue a lot and doesn't realize that he winds up mispronouncing things as a result. 
because like when your tongue goes in the size of your mouth like that that you wind up up like eh, i'm just gonna go back briefly here and i'm gonna try and explain and um let's actually get to the story now that the park has been open for a while, people Hang on. Seen they look at it fake. We want them to do cool things, right? Well, I'm gonna take that argument and uh, store it away here for later because trust me, they'll come back in in a bit of time. But in a bit, bit of time. And that sounds like he's biting his tongue when he says bit. Let's actually get to the story. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. For a while, people it seems have gotten too used to dinosaurs. Oh my god, this black chick who is a white chick is a white chick. I mean, people are still is somewhat that... entertaining. Oh Hang on, was that a Rachel Dolezal joke? I think. No, that's right. Well, they're not entirely desensitized to dinosaurs. They still like. Oh Jesus fucking Christ, those boobs! Yeah, you see what I mean? <laughs> oh my God! Figure out how to fix this. We need to. That's more. That's more cleavage than Bryce Dallas Howard showed in the actual movie. Exactly. Why does Malcolm have the evil goatee? I don't know. Whatever. I mean, that's kind of what they were... The body of a T-Rex, the wings of a pterodactyl, the neck of a brontosaurus, the head of a triceratops, lions for hands! And hey, there was a... Okay, hang on. I have a children's book where a, a scientist did exactly this and determined there was a species of, um, no, no lions, um, but determined that there was a species of, uh, flying, um, long-necked, three-horned creatures that once ruled the planet. That, uh, um, oh, and it was based, it was like a satirical look at, at the history of archaeology. It was kind of funny. I was of that one TV, Canadian TV show, Splice. I thought I was the That's only good. person who'd ever seen that show. Uh, well, I mean... Then I remember that people all actually over watched college, Canadian yeah. TV in Canada. <laughs> but gee, it's like I'm from Canada or something. <laughs> and you know, there were there was actual some content... There was actual... Um, there was actual unused content end of the movie that showcased what other horrifying things that Jurassic World was making, was potentially making with yeah, with the hybrid dinosaurs. Obviously, Doug does not go into that. I, that because... That's probably something that wasn't released at the time that this review came out, which is part of the reason why yeah, you but... want to wait until the fucking DVD comes out. Oh, like, yeah, I exactly. Did. I know so I did. You act... Like, I know that I did my Ant-Man 3 review with cam footage, but here's the thing. Like, there, that movie was so fucking broken that none of the behind-the-scenes helped. In fact, the behind-the-scenes stuff actually makes it worse when you look into it, because you find out, like I said in my review, that they shot the new ending over a weekend. <laughs> I am. Well, anyway, yeah, let's real? keep going. Uh, for real, yeah. Continue in. Give it bazooka boobs. Come on, we're clearly in bullshit science here. We can Let, no, Tamara is the one with the bazooka boobs, Doug. Like Keep that, up. It's gonna look amazing, and they've been building it up in this movie for quite a bit. So after tricking the security, Indominus. Like an 80s prison movie. No, really, he's got them sandwiched and everything. What does this monstrous, terrifying abomination of science look like? <laughs> Rob Walker dressed, <laughs> Rob Walker dr dressed as a dinosaur. As you can you know is that where that costume came from? I think there was a before it was used before. Yeah, I was gonna say I actually can't remember because it's been and like I, I pretty much only watch new nostalgia critic videos these days. I haven't watched, yeah. I haven't gone All back right, and you know watched what? any of his content lately. Yeah, probably ought to do that i'm well, probably what? due for a rewatch but like like i just don't remember the the i'm a dinosaur thing as well as i used to you know what we're not caveman guys we have google the made up name is a bore we're calling him indominus rex because it's easier to pronounce you know what's even okay indominus uh, hang on i actually looked this up at one point i'm gonna look it up again now oh uh bum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, that's not the right one that's there we go In Dom. Okay, so Tyrannosaurus Rex means uh, tyrant, tyrant lizard, lizard king. king. And 
Indominus means fierce, untamable king. Indominus oh, Rex, like Indominus, is from the same. Um, it, it is from the same. Well, no, no, no. It's the same kind of. Uh, I guess you could say genus in terms of like, like Latin word origins. Like it's not. It's not like they made up the fucking name. It's it's a logical kind of thing. Like I don't want to. If you want to complain about the problems the movie has, there are things that you could talk about. This isn't one of them. Having a no. uh, having like a marketable name in universe. Easier to pronounce. Go to. I also I found out Dino Rob first showed up in my pet monster review. So it's an old one. Uh, I was gonna say it, it can. It can the scientists have no fucking idea about. I mean, oh it can God, turn invisible. Not really. Okay, so, oh, um, Doug, allow me to uh, explain to you about a running theme of the Jurassic franchise. I know we got to talk about themes now, oh, which is something that I fucking hate. But a running theme of the Jurassic franchise is, um, you thought about, you thought so much about if you could, you didn't think about whether or not you should, and like the the creatures spontaneously like developing new abilities is part of the reason why Jurassic Park got fucked up like yeah. like they they developed the ability to change their sexes so that they could reproduce which is incidentally something frogs can do which is the stuff uh, and certain other uh reptiles and amphibians can do which and the is thing what they, is Build the genome. And with. Let's also not forget. Let's also not forget the fact that um, they didn't actually know the full capabilities of the Indominus. No, just despite were, studying it. Yeah, they wanted to. Uh, they were looking to make a cool toy first. Uh, and a train. Yeah, they were looking the to park. make. They they weren't paying. paying they weren't paying any attention, attention to what. They weren't paying entirely enough attention to, yeah. what made up. Up the of the what it is, which by the way, they also added some human DNA in there, which unfortunately shaped the mentality. I was gonna say, I'd love to know how that works. In fact, if you're gonna criticize the Indominus Rex, criticize that because I don't like at least like a ball of DNA. Why add other human? What is other that reptile do? DNA into the into the genomes made some level of sense? Human DNA, I don't okay. I don't get. Okay, Alex. Here's the thing: human, the human DNA ended up giving it a lot more intelligence, as well as the sadism of that work? Um, of you know. So wait, our intelligence. The, the okay, you could have. Are... So you can get that from a Komodo dragon. Komodo dragons do not give a shit. Komodo dragons will like. Yeah, but then you'd their... be. Yeah, but then you'd be making it even more busted by giving it the bacteria to instant kill anything. I mean, to be uh, yeah, fair, the size like, that the, at the size the Indominus is, is, I wouldn't exactly say that the the bite is something that'll kill you. Being digested by it is the thing that'll kill you. I don't know. Anyway, let's, go let's keep something going. Something it's the bite of eighty-seven. You see, their parents are getting a divorce. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually a really good joke. Yeah. Hi, Tamara. This is Tamara. Well, actually, they're not around me right now, so... <laughs> Whoa, Jesus. I just thought you bond with my boys. Listen, sis, I'm trying to make sure that the park doesn't eat itself. It's just really hard with my divorce hearings right now. You're calling me during your divorce hearing? Actually, they're telling me to hurry up right now. Why does the guy in the back look like Saul Goodman? That's a touch more important. I don't know. Who knows? The kids aren't all right because they're written like little dumbasses that go off into restricted areas in their American Gladiator ball that for some reason has no track. Okay. Okay. The obvious safety of the two people inside, especially two children without an adult in a ball without a track. How is this safe for the dinosaurs? I'm, you see people in go karts. Imagine throwing animals in that. Oh, hit it again. But, <laughs> what? Okay. To Why explain. Why did he pick a hadrosaur for this? I don't know. 
And the one thing that'll will fucking headbutt the fuck out of you. <laughs> okay, to explain why why they don't just do this, but there's are there are implants in the dinosaurs that kind of prevent it. Yeah, kind of cause them to like stay away from on the ball. Well, and also, so that way, if the ball comes close, they know to move away from it. Yeah, I, I remember. I remember that. Also, didn't wasn't there like a fence up that was supposed to keep them from out, and then like, yeah, and then yeah. and things went wrong, and it uh, was opened. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's not like it, it. It's not like negligence caused that. It's more like you know the matter of circumstance. Yeah, it was a matter um, of circumstance. I wish uh, we should have done this closer in time to us watching the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Again, because you never believe anything is there, it's not the least bit frightening. This is a shame. What I mean, can you do? They should have put Owen in Whiteface. Like Malcolm, I have a feeling Malcolm would <laughs> would look hilarious. White like face. That. Yeah. You know, I've never. You know, what? hey man, it'd be in talk if you guy do white face. Um, there is a tradition in various forms of Chinese and Hong Kong cinema of having um, putting an Asian dude in white makeup and giving him him like an extra large nose and saying that he is like the the evil foreign white guy. You know what? That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> And again, from what I've heard, apparently you can't be racist to white people, so... Yeah. At least that's what Twitter keeps like that. saying. They barely even look at each other. They share one kiss in the middle of the film, but then go back to acting like they're not a couple again. It's entirely pointless. I mean, fucking bizarre concept, but if you have a dude and a chick in a movie, they don't always have to hook up. It says this uh, when wanting Alan Grant and Ellie uh, Sadler to hook up, up in the first mo movie, especially. Okay, like Granted, I I kind of understand that because like they yeah. they had good at chemistry the very least, and not pairing them up least, in the third oh. movie was very strange, but like, uh, um, this this is a really strange criticism, Doug. I'm not gonna fucking yeah, lie. And... This is this is not what I would call, because like I frankly. You know, Bringing like, up like putting too much detail on I it. Know Owen and Their, Claire. Owen do and Claire's talk. relationship was one of the was one of the best parts of the trilogy. <laughs> yeah, uh, like, they and in the, the third movie they don't break up again. They stick together. Yeah, I, I, that was really good. And uh, I know this yeah. is in hindsight, you know. Oh, I, but at least their relationship in the in the first movie was like. You know, they they knew each other beforehand, and they kind of got they kind of got together, and they you know they didn't necessarily get along, but they like kind of understood each other, and that kind of helped out when things went to shit. You know, well, like you, and the you reason remember, why they ended up dog? kissing each other, the reason they ended up kissing each other, are or was because as oh, it, and what it was kind of a rescue romance thing. It, yeah, and, like you saved me. Yes. Yeah. Like the and they already had a degree of chemistry. That's that's the important thing to keep in mind here, Doug. I mean, if you got a romance, great, but it's not like a checklist. In Aliens, Ripley doesn't need to turn to Bishop and be like, I the, the, Alien? No. Dude, you, you fucking forget about Hicks. This is a bad comparison. It really is. Fuck. And plus Bishop Bishop's, was, and plus, Bishop's a robot. Plus Bish yeah, he's an android. <laughs> and Bishop, human cyborg relations. Uh, whatever that Futurama quote was. Yeah, but do you know what wasn't out of nowhere? Her numerous scenes with Hicks, where they had good chemistry and they connected and they worked well together. And the, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get myself worked up about Alien Three if I and keep I talking about this. That's as crazy as the park CEO flying a helicopter into certain death. You probably weren't thinking that by me at a segue. The owner decides he wants to help that... out Coke 2 by flying a helicopter to shoot at it. They even play this triumphant music like, yay, he's doing the smart thing. But despite everybody Sm telling him he's going to end heroic, up playing, he smart thing, the not, not, not the smart thing, the heroic thing. He was being, yeah, he, he was trying to help. He was trying to help. He failed, but he was trying. You, yeah. under he you understand that, Doug. 
It wasn't. No, he. Dude, the smart thing to do is to not and now we're back. Yeah, back when. And roll lands. This is the cool stuff I'm talking about. The pterodactyls are attacking people. Why is this awesome? Okay, but only doing cool stuff isn't necessary. They, they like like one of the things that we need is for them to do like you know, normal stuff, so you get the sense that these are like animals and not like a malevolent oh, was... force of the plot. Oh, and then there was also the uh Oh, and then there was also that, um, the one chick who was supposed to be watching over the kid, kids who ends up getting dragged around by, by a bunch of, uh, pterosaurs, and yeah. there was actual wire work involved in that stunt. Oh, uh, yeah, I remember that. That, I remember the, the first time I saw that clip, it was like, holy shit, this is going on for a really long time, and then I found out that there was all kinds of wire work in there, and that was, that was fucking cool. Yeah, there was actual, oh, uh, practical things going yeah. on yeah and they and they didn't cgi over everything like like they do in a, in a certain iron boy movie because it's taking it to the next level yeah. we've seen dinosaurs eat scientists <laughs> and people with guns oh hi dino rob sick to death of it here even though it's obviously fake it still looks really cool they do some legitimately creative awesome stuff <laughs> this hyper hyperdemic doug walker I, doug walker I love hyperdemic the three okay, before uh Okay, that's... What's his name, dude? That's not accurate at all to what yeah. happened. I was going to say... He darts into one. Yeah, I was going to say that... You know what? He he only had a Model M16 around, so that's what he did. The, this is... This is a, uh, a product of the lack of budget they had, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he didn't go out mm -hmm. and, and get a, a Trank gun. Go with you. Yeah. Come with me if you want to leave. Anyway. Uh, man. Yes. Yes. Well, you know, Bryce Dallas Howard's ass is large enough to take cover behind. <laughs> Why is Freddy Krueger here? Nothing. Nothing. It's almost like we don't need a gigantic massacre. Yeah, I, I was gonna say, uh, are they the main focus of the plot or not? Because if not, uh, we can, like, kind of move the fuck on, Doug. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we don't I need understand to arguing with the director yeah. about, like, what the main focus of the plot should be or shouldn't be, but, like, we've already established that we have four main characters that we're following, right? We have the two kids, and then... And then we have Claire, the, the, then we have Claire Owen. and Owen, right? And if, like, yeah. one of the problems with a lot of bad, badly made films is that they have way too many fucking characters. The Last Jedi has too many fucking characters in it. Fucking God's Not Dead Free. has too many fucking characters in it. Like, like we can... Spider-Man, uh, Spider-Man 3 does... I wouldn't exactly say, because Spider-Man 3 has a lot going on, but it doesn't have so much going on that just doesn't go fucking anywhere. And, like, if if you expanded this out to have, like, the fucking crowd at the park be, like, more of them be focus characters as well, you're starting to bleed over into God's Not Dead territory where you've got a bunch of bullshit that doesn't actually... uh hinge around the central aspects of the plot and it just kind of goes nowhere, you know? Yeah. Deliciousness mm. and we never ever touch them again. What do they do next? Well, something completely different, really new. You've never seen this in Jurassic Park movie. They go hunting dinosaurs in the jungle. Right? Right? Pushing the fucking envelope here. Because hey, remember, there's an evil scientific hype. Do you not have a Stop. pair of binoculars you could use, Doug? Oh, hi, Rob. I want to weaponize these raptors because I'm the obvious bad guy. I adjust my belt buckle all the time. No, no, we don't care. We don't care. We just had a scene where pterodactyls played hot potato with people's heads. Why would we care? I, I, I'll admit, it's it, it, not exactly the best idea. Can we stop repeating what we've seen a fuck ton of times in the other films? 
Can we please get some new developments? <laughs> okay. Doug, allow me to explain here for a second here. Um, New developments don't always mean good. Like, yeah. I'd rather for a, a little bit of repetition between between films than us going off on uh, a complete out of nowhere fucking tangent like some filmmakers like to do. Who Like, were, were they just rather than doing something that we've done mm -hmm. before and is good and, you know, will will work. Um, we're, you know, we just, we, we do something, um, you know, standard Hollywood bullshit <laughs> where, or we just ignore everything and fuck around. One of the biggest developments in the film is coming up. And I mean, this is like a huge twist they've been building up. They use the rafters to find code two and somehow think oh, yeah. things are going to take it down. Eh, okay. Hey, Doug. Um, I know you've only got like 20 minutes of a review here, but you completely glossed over the fucking Raptors plot with Owen, where where he was training them, and they were kind of, they were kind of like he, he was the fucking pack leader. You remember that? Where he was, yeah. he was Alpha, and the others were all, all. You forget about that, Doug. Could you at least have mentioned that? <laughs> This is part of the reason why I don't like to make short reviews and why it takes so long for me to get stuff done. Because, yeah. like, I I try to make sure that I mention everything that's of major importance, and I try to come back to it. And, and this just completely glossed over the the Raptors plot and the whole whole thing. Like, the fact that Vincent did not... We, we were, like, ten min halfway through the fucking review, and Vincent D'Onofrio just got mentioned. Dinosaur that looks like a raptor, acts like a raptor, sounds like a raptor, and moves like a raptor. I think it's pet raptor. No, no, no. That wasn't. It wasn't. Doug, that wasn't presented as. Kevin, remind me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe that was presented as like a major twist we just it was just like it oh. really wasn't it was just a it was a part of it was just a um it, it was a, it, it was, was just, one of the things and it was like oh that's why this is happening oh and then they yeah. moved on i um, like they didn't dwell yeah. on it and also he mentions <clears throat> i saw people keep mentioning that the raptor program failed when in reality no it didn't it's just you know the raptor or started to question Owen's authority. Yeah. Right, Did you watch the movie? No. No, it looked like a giant T Rex with some mods. You know? This is a very strange tangent, Doug. You're spending more time, more percentage of your review is spent on this than percentage of the movie was spent on this. Yep. That would be funny if it was a valid complaint. Bye, Rob. Okay, you know what? That's fair. Them and thousands of other people next door, but that'd be no fun involving them. But suddenly. Claire goes to this giant door and says, a door from half Open up the door. Yeah, Why are her boobs head. always in the center of attention? Suddenly, the door I don't up. because Doug's a hypocrite. Darkness facing her. <gasps> Holy shit, could it be? She stares into the black unknown while lighting up a flare. <gasps> Holy fucking god. Is it? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> It's it's the song. He stops fanboying over the T-Rex. Calm down. Okay, you can you can stop playing the song. There we go. The T-Rex wasn't that much bigger than... The T-Rex is smaller than the Indominus. 
Oh, uh, hello. Uh, hi, John I Bailey. Know you're used to doing the honest trailer voice on your own reviews on your own channel, plug, but I need your help. <laughs> uh, with what exactly? I've never seen well, the, I need a voice the, the video. To narrate the climax of Jurassic World. The motherfucking T-Rex scene? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Done. The T Rex takes a bite out of the Pussysaurus, but then Pussysaurus bites back. The T Rex slams. You know, for some reason, I imagined him, him not looking slightly differently. I've never seen his actual face. Suddenly, one of the Raptors jumps on top, freeing the T Rex. She knocks the head back, slamming Pussysaurus into one of the overly priced restaurants. The T Rex then says, You cannot defeat. Such awesomeness. Wait, wait, wait. The Why are you using your Optimus well, Prime voice? You sound like Optimus Prime. I mean, you can be full of Optimus Prime sounding like a T-Rex. Such awesomeness. My amazing kickassery cannot be contained. One shall stand and one shall fall. Oh. I know that didn't happen in the movie. Who's got the cool voice? Okay, sorry. But they survive the blast. And if Mecha Godzilla comes in and fucks everything up for some reason. Surrender or face the literally the plot of Godzilla vs. Kong. Thus the motherfucking T Rex. The age of extinction. Go fish. Suddenly that cool jaws dinosaur you saw earlier comes up and eats the living hell out of that piece of shit. The battle is over. T Rex and Raptor, two sworn enemies, acknowledge that their honor has been satisfied and that, live to fight. That Raptor day. looks like it has a yarmulke on. Oh, and some stuff with human characters happens. But who cares? The T Rex climbs to the tallest building on the tallest mountain overlooking the park, lets out one more triumphant roar, turns to the camera, and says, I am a motherfucking T Rex. <laughs> Well. You need to get laid big time, Doug. Please, Doug. You're gonna give me motion sickness if you keep doing that, Doug. God damn you, movie! God damn you! Not only did you create one of the coolest. Why does he have one piece of glitter on the floor next to him? That's what you're obsessing over? Well, no, I'm just. It's right here. So that wasn't the original T-Rex. Was that wasn't the original T-Rex. That was the Site B T-Rex. Well, not even... Well, not even any of the ones that were in Lost World. Yeah. Also, the Spinosaurus was... In real life, it was larger than the T-Rex, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah no. I mean, also, it's a hybrid dinosaur. It's not a uh, real one. Yeah. You promised so many wonderful things for us, and instead you hurt me. You hurt me time and again. Well, no more. What? Goodbye, Jurassic Park sequel. What? The greatest T-Rex fight ever. I'd say I'm falling for your bullshit all over again. Love me, Jurassic Park sequel. Yes. It's like Frost Nixon. What the fuck was that? Very good, but the last few minutes practically makes up for all of it. I guess really the film's not uh, the worst. I mean, it is well acted, looks nice, and does uh, have You're just going to repeat that shot of looking straight down so Tamara's bra. Stuff to get to those scenes. If you want to do a suspense film, great. Make the effects better and give us more scary scenarios. If you want to do a beat film, great. Go all out. Make some totally insane choices. Make the Bye. whole film as good as that last ten minutes. But this half and half thing... Dude, oh, Doug. Man, I quit you okay, so... Videos. Hang on, Doug. If you made the whole film like the end sequence, we get a Michael Bay movie, where the entire yeah. film is just bullshit. Yeah. You want that, Doug? Because I don't. I've watched a lot of Michael Bay films. Some of them are decent, and then we get fucking Transformers two, Transformers three, and Transformers five. What about four Transformers four? Transformers 4 has a couple of breaths to take. It, there, there's Alex, like, there are slow Alex, scenes where they Alex. don't have bullshit going on, Kevin. Alex. I will stand Alex. by this. Alex, they forgot to, to <clears throat> properly put in, in effects for the green screens on the display is in there, and they also forgot to not light up the Sears Tower in Hong Kong. They killed T.J. Miller in the first five minutes of the film. 
That's fine with me. They wrote, okay. They wrote, they wrote TJ Miller as a pedophile. It's <sighs> no, pretty that, much a pedophile. No, TJ Miller. TJ Miller. TJ Miller's character, like, what? Are we talking about Never the same mind. guy, or are you talking about not the other guy? He was call, calling the the seventeen year old old quite hot. Oh Jesus fucking Christ! What? And uh, trying to hit on her. I mean, uh, oh, fuck it. We're, we're just going to move on. Go. It is the yeah. Best out of all Why did Vincent D'Onofrio only get a... a phenomenal feat. A lot of choices they make do still piss me off, but I'm not going to be shocked if other people like it. For a lot of people, it's stupid in all the right ways. For me, I didn't think it went far enough. Except for that ending, which, like I said, is totally worth the price of admission. Yeah, I realize this review is all over the place. Should you see it? Should you not see it? But hopefully you can gauge some idea if this is the right movie for you. So, no, no, not really. Not really. Then. Yeah, pretty much. There's yeah, no like if I was making a decision about whether or not I would watch the movie based on this review, I don't know if I'd be informed at all. Because this is such a barely even surface level read of the movie. Probably the better movie. Like, the, and this is part of the reason why I stopped watching or reading reviews for uh, for things because there were a lot of reviews out there that don't actually inform you about the quality of the movie. You know, and excuse me, and this is one of them. You know. At least this has the potential to be funny at times. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the key book's probably all right, funny. All right, now we're on. Now we're gonna be on Pixels. I have not seen this review in so the, long. Is the Pixels one up next? Hang on. Let me yes. yes, it is. Uh, where's my fucking cover? Go. Oh, hang on. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah. yeah so up next. Wait, um, I'm on the record as... I've seen Pixels. I've also seen Jurassic SFI. World. Uh, I wish I hadn't seen fucking Pixels. Same. This this review is going to be much, much better. <laughs> because there's not a whole lot of plot in Pixels. Yep. It's an Adam Sandler movie. <laughs> That's with video on. game reference. It's an Adam Sandler movie. The Adam Sandler song Adam. by Slowly Dying Records. Directed by Chris Columbus. I remember liking this review a lot. Oh, it's a Samic acoustic. Okay. Oh, yeah. I have Those never watched movies. any of the good Adam Sandler movies, to be honest. Only the bad ones. Those are... Those are... Okay, Doug. This isn't a particularly complicated set of guitar chords. Could you maybe, like... I think that's the point. Could you maybe, like, pretend you're playing it rather than just flicking your thumb at it? Oh, fuck you, Doug. Well, Nicky was not bad. I don't remember. Waterboy, no, honestly, like, the Waterboy is one of his best. Banglish, yeah, those are all good ones. The Cobbler wasn't that bad. Uncut Gems. You should watch Uncut Gems if you're looking for a good Adam Sandler movie that he's done within the last few years. And if you want to get mad at a movie for wasting its cast and potential, watch The Ridiculous Six. You had a guitar, but no fucking picks. Like, I, I can't get over this. It's like, I used to find guitar picks on the side of the road. Rob Schneider is not an actor. He's just Adam Sandler's buddy. Rob Schneider's... You know what? Rob Schneider has the potential to be funny. Actually, Rob Schneider was really good in a little movie called Down Periscope. But he Alex, is the most irritating there's... part of that movie. Alex, you okay, are that's not in... well, okay. That you know what? That's funny. 
Why are you humping the fucking guitar? Adam Sandler doing right now. Yeah, that's that's a funny thing. Adam Sandler, people, people have told me that they didn't believe that Adam Sandler was in those movies because it doesn't sound like him. The last thing I saw him was in Brooklyn Nine Nine. He was in the Brooklyn Nine Nine. I think it was like a cameo episode. Like he made a cameo. Yeah, he made a cameo in that episode, in one of the episodes. Like as himself, Noah, actually. Gizmo says this didn't age well with what with more than half of those movies being good. Also, Hotel Ass. Yeah, he he picked out some weird ones. I love the Water Boy. Like it's got some. It's got some Sandlerisms in it, but like. What the first hotel ass? It's a kids movie, so I forgive it. Then it just, you know, got worse <laughs> from there. Uh, yeah. Like I mean, I have Rob a little. Rob Schneider is the fake so. Mexican from um, Ridiculous Six. Hmm. It should have just been Adam Sandler. Um. It should have been Adam Sandler, Luke Wilson, and, um, that was an 8-string. Where do you get these fucking guitars, Doug? I think that was an 8-string. I only got a couple of shots of it. And, uh, hey, Taylor wait. Lautner. Hello, I'm the nostalgic guy. Remember it so you don't have... Gizmo, if you want to jump oh, in. I did my clipless review of Jurassic World alone. We have a link in the, uh, chat. Another recent movie. And surprisingly... It's not that the... It's not, that the, it's not that people were requesting this. It was mostly due to the fact that it was... That it ended up getting views, period. Oh, yeah, but... And here's the thing. I can definitely see people requesting this because I think, um... Brad Jones did... Was... Uh, I think he still does his, um... Midnight Screenings. His, uh, Midnight Screenings review of Pixels was... If, if I'm remembering correctly, he blew the fuck up. And, um, I'm, yeah, but at the very least, it's part of Brad Jones' style. Oh, with that. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah. but he's not reviewing porn. <laughs> I, you know what? I think he, um, him and Linkara were supposed to do a, uh, a porno comic called Mighty Muffin Pounder Rangers together. And I don't know if they ever managed to get that uh, review. Mighty made. Muffin Pounder Rangers. Mighty Muffin think Pounder gonna... Ranger. Yeah, yes. considering Linkara's current stance on things, I doubt that would ever come out. No, Linkara is a fucking tool, anyways. Hey, he take... hey, hey, the fact that he couldn't take me calling him, uh, well, I didn't call him childish. I said that it sounded childish whenever he replaced bullshit with bullcrap. It's like you can write around the swears without adding in fake swears, you know? Yeah, you, you could call just it, said it was nonsense. I'm... You could have said it was just All nonsense. Right, I'm gonna hit it. That's a that was actually a good one. Although, frankly, after having seen it's and now, unfortunately, like, like after having seen how Tamara was done up in the last one, and um. I'm curious Ooh. to see how he would have shot a clipless review of Fifty Shades. <laughs> Who knows? Never say never. I mean, the movie's probably old enough to be considered oh, hey. nostalgic. Oh, God. Oh, this is back when we actually had some kind of, uh... Sensible... I mean, before this year's Fantastic Four. Yeah, Ooh. this is back when people would have like sensible reactions to shit like this. Oh God, that's my boy. That's my boy. Had Andy Samberg in it. Andy Samberg. <laughs> no. Hey, hey, Sonic. What's worse than a nega Hitler? Hmm. I don't know. One nega chin. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> that was 
Roma, future, Roma, future, Roma, Hi, elephant. Future, Roma, future, Roma, future, Roma. Yes. Yeah, the elephant of room. When everybody's already talking about how similar this concept is to an episode of Future Rob. Yeah, I love. Short film, yeah, I love the that episode. Pixel Tales short of film was great. Yeah, Tales of Interest. In I love Futurama. Futurama is one of yeah, my all-time favorite shows. And I, I think the reboot did all right. I still haven't watched the reboot, unfortunately. It's all right. I mean, it's not as good as the old stuff. But it's watched so good. Better than. There is. His films are actually so easy to make now that you can literally phone them in. Uh, let's oh. See, uh, you know what? It doesn't you know, surprise uh, me. Hey, hey, AI. Hey, hey, look at this. Doug is predicting the rise of ChatGPT. He accidentally predicted Willy Wanker's little adventure that he went on in uh, Glasgow. Oh. Did you know that that guy's name is actually hey, William? The guy who put together the, the Glasgow Wonka experience, and his name is actually William, and people have started calling him Willy Wanker <laughs> for for using the AI to, to make I would rather shit. Adam Sandler's normal voice than his annoying voice. And Adam oh. Sandler's normal voice is annoying enough as it is. My balls are oh. cheese than What's the difference? Oh! Have you guys seen Bedtime Stories? Oh, I've seen yes. that movie, yeah. Yeah! Uh, you know what? Adam Sandler should make more kids' films because, like, when he has the restrictions of, like, a G or PG rating, um, he can be surprisingly funny when he's not going off yeah. on, like, complete nonsense and, and perverted bullshit. Yeah, uh, yeah I guess. <laughs> I guess Click was all right, I a guess. A bland hot girlfriend or really bland hot girlfriend? What's Is there the a real... I so the bland one at least has uh a potential to have a personality and character, whereas the really bland hot girlfriend uh doesn't. Hot girlfriend. What's the difference? One gets a crying scene. I guess that one. You got it. <laughs> oh, those are add-ons that come to. Oh yeah, so we have have Kevin James. I loved you in King of Queens. What happened to you? Suckered in celebrities. Peter Dinklage. Pity cameos from SNL alumni. Uh, yeah. A script by a third grader. That's that's being a little bit over generous, aren't you, Doug? Arts, poops, pee, all on screen at once. Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah. Kevin James, suckered in celebrities, pity cameos from SNL alumni. The only thing left to choose is funny or unfunny. Oh my god, I never knew we had a choice. Choose funny, man. All right. <laughs> hey, what the? Come on! Come on. Well, you have to, Jesus, you have to wait for a blue moon. You need to put it input the real code first. <laughs> that was all right. That's actually yeah. Versions of Adam Sandler and Kevin James in an arcade competition where we insert Sandler. Sandler clearly has a pillow under her shirt. Our first big zinger. Yeah. Hey, it's the. Uh... <laughs> that was the first. That's that. People. Yeah. That actually. Yeah, that was actually. Uh... Yeah. And, and you know what? Kanye West would steal this joke when he went on the um, the Alex Jones program uh, a couple of years ago. <laughs> uh, seems like a uh, the, it sounds like turning a, the fucking frogs gay. <laughs> yeah, is this is reminding me of the uh, arcade from the Wizard? Actually, ten million dollar budget, and that is their opening joke. Hey, that hey, uh, Pixels was a Sony film, and I happen to know that. Uh, the Sony Movie Club was attempting to give away copies of Pixels for, like, five years after this movie came out. Like, they had so many fucking Blu-rays of that film that went unsold that they kept trying to send them out for free. And I'd always say, no, I just want a different movie. Just give me Pixels. a different movie. I don't Please want Pixels. Buy Pixels. I, I, Please buy I Pixels. Don't, I, I, don't need even want it. I don't even want Pixels for free. I deleted the copy that I had on my hard drive. It's not worth the, like, two gigabytes worth of hard drive space it was taking up. You yeah. need to pay... They need to pay you to buy the movie. Product placement. Ah. Sandler loses 
to a kid named Eddie, which means Eddie's gameplay will be put in a time cap. I love the power glove. Space. It's so this bad. Present day when Sandler app number two two nine down on his luck has been who people think well. God, that is finally accurate looking Sandler like Adam Sandler. Sandler like supportive best friend and binge drinking idiot Kevin James, who is president of the United States. Somehow, and is somehow illiterate. That dumb. Kevin James is I have a feeling that from might have been from. a. Uh, I have a feeling that that might have been a, a joke about George W. Bush being a dumbass. Uh, but Bush hadn't been president for, like, eight years at this point, I think. Yeah, and so, then Doug, of course, says, as in a world that's, that's considering Donald Trump as president, that sounds like a lot of bullshit. President of the United States. Oh, bullshit. In a country that's actually kind of considering electing Donald Trump as our Consider next they we, did. we can't be fucking stupid enough to accept this as a reality. And the weird thing mm. is, he still plays it as the idiot best friend like he always does. He doesn't act like a president at all. Which is why, just to give you an idea about how lazy this is, I'm gonna switch out Kevin James with Obama. Now tell me if this makes any sense whatsoever. <laughs> Look at all the makeup they put on. Malcolm. Character. So, Adam, I'd like to get drunk while... Uh, I'd like a little dimples. But I, uh, had to yeah. overcome this outburst I had while screaming at school children because I can't read. That's I miss really Obama. Movie. That's really in our movie. Shouldn't you be doing, like, presidential stuff, that kind of thing? Oh, I do. Like, when our country's under attack, I make a cake with my wife. That can't be in our movie. Page 22. That's in our movie. I'll give you a call when I need you to replace our military. If you're still in the theater, folks, I, uh, salute you. Sadly, I this was. is all things. This is all things that happened in the. God, you watched him. Hi, Tamara's boobs again. Champagne out of a sippy cup. Yeah, a sippy cup. Oh, is uh, that your kids? No, he's twelve. Then why do you have? <gasps> How dare you! I can never see us becoming why? a couple ever, ever. Okay, who's the Could you maybe find? Okay, hang on, hang on, quick, quick. Like get... Doug, can you like find a ferrite bead to wrap your microphone cable in? Because. The sound that we're hearing in the background, the eh sound, sound the like eh, it, it's it's a different pitch than that, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah. The feedback background noise here that we're hearing is the is the microphone cable acting as an antenna, picking up the feedback from the fucking fluorescent lights. So here's what we can do: we can either light the scene with other things, we can ground out the cable properly, or just run a fucking noise suppression filter over the goddamn audio. I do it all the time. Oh, like you mean fans... like what I got with yeah. the uh, dragon pad? Yeah. Oh, well, no. Uh, well, the dragon pad is just, you know, it's a pop filter. But the, the noise suppression filter um, that I have <clears throat> on my microphone here, I have a um, I have a noise gate chain that cuts out the, uh, the noise of the computer fan in the background. And then I... During the summertime when I'm running in my air conditioner, I turn that up a bit. And then I have a bass boost in there because that takes out some of the lower end and I re I repair the audio essentially by bass boosting it and so that we don't lose uh, the low end of my voice when, uh, when I'm running that filter over it. It's elementary audio engineering. Doug has a really expensive mixing console in the background here. Together, but yeah. They get together, but and that was audio. Who knows they're gonna audio. Get together. Who's the one idiot who that was audio pet talk oh, with Nobody. Call to the White House as Sandler app one four three takes place. Of the huge romantic coincidence that Monaghan happens to Beautiful be romantic. Lieutenant Colonel. Insert saved by the Bell commercial here. Hey, hey, we're not done yet. We're not done yet. Now, Adam, our military was attacked in a way that was uh, very similar to a video game. As you know, no one in our American intelligence has ever played a video game. Yeah, nerds and games often don't mix. You are the only <laughs> person who can figure out these patterns that people online have figured out years ago. I personally only watch PewDiePie. Never touched a video game in my life. You know, I like to keep listening, but I just want to emphasize more what a gosh darn great misunderstood guy Sandler is. We need you know, uh, let's see here. Uh, John it, Snow so have have you guys seen or read the recent crossover with the Phase Clan that the Batman comics did? 
So no. uh, it was just as bad as this, except that there was also oh. um. There was also, like, a weird video game isekai thing going on where the Riddler created a virtual world and, like, the FaZe Clan went in and beat up the Riddler in the game while Batman tracked him down and beat him up in real life. Nah, businessman, popular kid. Uh, go, go watch Hugby's video about... Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's in this movie. His character amounts to fucking nothing. There is a feature where you can just insert all the bully dialogue from all its other movies. You are a loser and weird. You are different from us, which makes you bad. You're marching to a different drum. We'll leave nowhere. Now get out of here, you puppy eyed dreamer. Before I hammer in some more, how wrong I am and how <laughs> beautiful you are. <clears throat> But don't worry, we can't see Sandler as too much. <laughs> 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 comes with unrealistic, overcompensatingly pathetic best friend. And I know oh, he's hi, a Josh Gad. Josh Gad. And not the actual snowman from Frozen, but I'm choosing him because the only funny thing they have in common is that you want to see them both in bail. Whoa! Aren't you that you know, from my past? at least you know, Olaf was I funny. 30 years wishing a video game character would come to life and make love to me. I uh, just like my fan base. Now let's teach him. Mean, he was only funny when he was in video pain. games can somehow make you a hero. I think this calls for some yeah. game gibberish. Yeah. Dobby, 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 you know, Josh Gad has seriously uh, blotted his copybook with me over the years. Because I liked some of the things he was in, like, a while ago. And it seems like he's been in nothing but bad shit ever since. Beast. Uh. Sorry, there was... The There's this cough that keeps coming up every so often. I feel like I should get that looked at. What do you think? Uh. You, you pro probably ought to. Need you, Doctor Man. Interpret the time capsule and think it's an act of war. Therefore, <laughs> we okay, kind of yeah. So, um, I'm come. going to explain that this is. I believe this is from a movie called Contact. This concept is taken from a movie called Contact, where um, the aliens beamed back a transmission of uh, the like the one of the very first television signals that was ever picked up, and um, it it was uh. It was a broadcast from Nazi Germany of Adolf Hitler speaking. You know, far be it for me to say that a that a big Hollywood movie from like twenty years before this one did something better than a shitty Adam Sandler comedy, but a, you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Stop being on yeah. unoriginality course, doesn't help you, attack, Adam. Ice centipede. Oh, no! Do not listen to him, even though we are supposed to. We are military and not trained to follow orders. Let's see if a gun and start shooting him up like an action hero. Because playing Which makes no sense. Clearly the same thing is fighting yeah. the field. And he kills them I mean, if it was Contra, this maybe I would have understand. Yeah, it's like this, this is like somebody read Ready Player One and didn't understand that that was taking place in VR, you know? Yeah. Being like people who played mm -hmm. video games, just like the graphics who just are so TV. lifelike. Hey, man, troll! I don't even think the people who wrote this movie I'm ever sure played a video game. Sure, we've seen that from Sao Bridge. Oh yeah. 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 Hang on, I that's a that's a Nerf Recon CS6 over there, if I'm not mistaken. Which one? Then, uh, the one on the left, and then I don't know what the one in the middle is, but the one on the right is one of the heavy battle rifles. Uh, okay. Incidentally, it's also one of the ones that I always wanted as a kid, but can never find at a store near me. Need that a rifle, most. Or at least that's the barrel off of the CS6. For a party where the president shoves the hell out of everybody. Uh, Mr. President, don't you think we should try communicating with the aliens to negotiate out of any further trouble? No. Now's the time to be smart. Being the overweight, rambunctious white man that I am, again, I took some liberties here. It's my job to go Ted Kennedy on this beer. Overweight white man! Overweight white man! But knowing enough Don't shake up that... Grandpa, stop shaking the Red Bull. It's gonna explode. Hi, Walter Benaziak. Oh my god, I'm on! In reverse. Huh? Look, you know how in a Shyamalan film you take something that's not funny and you make it funny? Yeah. Well, in an Adam Sandler movie, you take something that's funny and you make it not funny. Oh, that sounds you. about right. Ooh, the apple. 
happens a lot. Also, it's funny how Peter Dinklage was in two movies back to back that completely wasted his fucking talents as an actor. Uh, this and mm -hmm. um, the Angry Birds movie. Incidentally, both were made by Sony. Yeah, Wait, here's the, the Angry game. Birds? Yeah, but here's, yeah, he was, yeah, he was the Mighty Eagle. He was Mighty Eagle in Angry Birds. Yeah, but here's the thing. Angry Birds at least made him a meme. This did nothing. Yeah, I was going to say, he has one really good scene in that. It was like, oh, no, 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 no. That was funny. You, you know that, because I use that yeah. meme all the time. No. And that was the best That was the best part of that movie. The second one was better. I mean, I still think the Terrence scene would have been funnier. Eh. Uh, uh, okay, yeah. yeah. That's fair. We still don't know what he did. Still thinks the audience hmm? is laughing at this. Mon, you can leave. This is awkward. Christ, this is too awkward even for me. And I'm Shyamalan! Yes, thank you for reminding me, Doug. I didn't get it the first time. Why is there a scratchy thing by that logo? I don't know. It looks like it wasn't so anti-alias or... No, never mind. City, oh yeah, this is so... Oh god, oh, yeah, that was, pack, this man. scene is horrible. Okay, why in this universe does being good at Pac-Man suddenly translate into being good at driving? Yeah, I'd... that is you true. Really trust your fate in Why the wouldn't hands of Pervert T. Froman? I'm funny because I don't make you laugh. Wouldn't it make more sense if the <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel, the one that's been in the field, was driving, and Sandler's men, the people that have just been watching? That would Spider make more sense. Yeah, I was gonna say that would. No, no, no. You don't want that. You don't want it because I gotta be the hero. So uh, you, you can't really take it that seriously. Yeah, like but you can't you can't do things that make sense in the script. You have to. Taking it so seriously. But like you could write the film. You're so that it's supposed to feel for this romance because the reason why the Futurama version works so well. Eh. If you want to go full silly, fine. Then well, like, leave out the serious uh, romance. Ready... Leave out the generic bully. Leave out the complicated rules you're making up. Ready Player this One also don't make any sense. And, and, and the whole recreation of Pac-Man in this film doesn't make any no, sense no, either because it's, okay. it's like it's real-world recreation of Pac-Man. You know, sure. That's not even. It's not even real world Pac-Man. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't. Shit doesn't work. I heard it so many times. My personality. I guess that this is a, this feels like a movie that wasn't even made by people who even played a video game in their lives. Come on, guys, we're gonna go get my girlfriend. Yeah. Back. Who said I was flirting? I didn't say I was flirting. I'm gonna win the championship and save Grandma. Huh? So music to tell us how to feel. Does that mean you're gonna finally give me the funny line? Don't ever ask me that again, Dick Lynch. <laughs> <laughs> but the aliens claim that Earth cheated, not playing by the video game rules. And New Tom Brady. Yeah, because Peter Dinklage entered a cheat code in real life. Somehow. There aren't any cheat codes in Pac-Man. The cheat code that he entered wouldn't have worked for that anyways. Yes, go ahead, Tamara. Are you fucking kidding me? No, seriously, are you fucking kidding me? First of all, how did you enter a cheat code at a championship? Did none of the hundreds of people there see you enter it? Mm -hmm. Second of all, where did you enter it? Your fucking car? Did you have a control panel on your wheel? Or did you just <laughs> You just pushed up, 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 down, down, left, right, left, right, made A, B, honk. This is real life! You can't teleport your car or enter cheat codes in real life. Yeah, I took the words right out of my mouth, Tamara. We all said yes to this script. We wanted our name. You guys, hey, I hope you guys got paid. I mean, at least some of these actors may have to get some work after this. Yeah, bring it in. Oh, hey, Peter Dinklage wound up being in season 8 of Game of Thrones, unfortunately, so. And now we reach the part of the app that nears the end of every Adam Sandler movie, giving up. Yep, mm -hmm. they just give up. You know how in most movie climaxes, that's where they try their hardest? Well, here, that's where they try their hardest. Wait a minute, I'll be right back. Fact, uh, you want me to pause it? The app that's simply entitled, no. The lazier the writer, okay. The faster the paycheck. This 
is where you add up how many times the writer clearly didn't give a shit and just wrote down anything he wanted to get his paycheck a I mean, little he gave a shit before. Yeah, hey, by the way, the aliens gave several trophies does anybody here remember back when, um, lazy writing like this that was based around solely spectacle and visual and not about, and, and around on jumping to easy emotions and shit like that was considered a, uh, a bad thing? Anybody remember that? Remember, remember how? Remember how back in the day when uh, a, a movie would come out like this, um, people wouldn't try and justify all the stupid decisions that the writer, director, cast, etc. had um, had done. That they wouldn't try and and say, "Oh, the themes, the themes. This movie has themes." This is part of the reason why I wasn't so keen to talk about themes earlier. But this movie has themes. This movie has themes of. Of like working together and and fair play and and uh, and like you know yeah, not letting people get you down and shit. This movie has themes to it. it <laughs> you want to try and defend pixels using its fucking themes? You want to try and say, oh, this is a reference to a video game, therefore it's okay. You want to say, oh, this bad writing thing in this movie is okay because we wanted to have this um this spectacle take place these characters making no fucking sense is okay because we wanted to have this specific kind of arc i'm complaining about the last jedi by the way yeah i'm complaining mm -hmm. about everything that goes on in modern hollywood where they just yeah, pretend and also that, that, that shit that doesn't they'll... matter and, yeah, and then also these that same they, um... fucking critics excoriated this film rightfully so for all of the bullshit that Adam Sandler and his uh, fellows put us through. Then they sucked Ryan Johnson's dick when he killed Luke Skywalker. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, and let's, oh, and also keep in mind that this is now the first time they mentioned Qbert in this, this review. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. Not it's like Qbert like was was pretty much a non-entity in this movie. He was yeah, just I was going to say, hey, frankly, Kubert barely existed in this movie anyway, so I'm not going to criticize. He had criticize. more of a role in Wreck-It Ralph than he did in this movie, and he yeah. was in that yeah. movie less. And then Kubert... Kubert... We'll, we'll get to that. Forget, this movie came after Wreck-It Ralph, right? Yes, it did. Wreck-It Ralph huh. came out in 2012. I think. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Red yeah, Ralph came out in 2012. I remember because we had a, um... I believe there was a trailer for it before Men in Black 3. Yeah, there's definitely yeah. screens, yeah. The fact that Kubert yeah. here literally screams, hey, we watch Wreck-It Ralph, let's try to do a Vatty. Also, remember remember the PS3? Pepperidge Farm remembers. I remember the PS3. It was all the right. That was my Blu-ray oh. player for years. Oh, hey, Wolverine. I'm the best there is in what I do. What I do best isn't very nice. They wanted to put me in a bunker. I said, no thanks. Instead, I'm going to fight video game Malcolm. aliens and uh, save the world. It, at what? That'd be pretty cool if Obama really did that. Yeah, you know, yeah, this right. I mean, there's a reason why. I mean, there's a reason why you know Abraham Lincoln as a vampire hunter is so cool. Yeah, and, and you know, there's a the Independence Day did the whole president saves the world thing pretty, or you know, joins the team that saves the world thing pretty well, I'd say. For, for a oh, and the president movie. in that movie was played by Lone Star. Oh yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, you know, the sequel was fucking awful, but, you know, hey, hey, the first Independence Day was really good. Yep, too bad. Now that's the stupidity I'm used to. It's like Independence Day, only that was hilarious, and this isn't. Yeah, I, 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 I forgot about... <laughs> Why did you... Why did you put a fake thing over... You, you... Sh you had no, you had no problem with her boobs being like this in the. I try, the closer my money gets to me. So the aliens send a CG Max headroom that somehow. Max headroom. No, 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 Doug, Doug, you, 
You're mistaken. They didn't send Max Headroom. They sent the, uh, uh, the, the pirated Max Headroom. Really no reason at all to give them a chance oh, to yeah. win. Oh, it, yeah. It's Kinky Dong. So, what do our heroes do? They cheat and don't play by the game's rules. Yeah, remember that scene earlier saying that the was bad? Well, that's exactly what they do, except it ends up winning the day. Oh, and yeah. somehow it worked. It's because it makes Adam Sandler look good. Man, I remember when Donkey... I'm almost rewarded for my... I don't know, man, I don't remember Donkey Kong being that simple. Hey, guys. If only Mario just threw Jumpman, just threw the hammer. Do you remember when people used to give directors and, and creative shit when they just pull something out of their ass to make the movie end? Yep. Honestly, I, I don't remember. Kind of a with, honestly, kind of remember back when media. they were Whenever they sucking talk... Disney's cock every single fucking time they put out something terrible. And let's not also not forget it. how much shit people give Zack Snyder almost every day. Uh -huh. People people still haven't gotten over Batman v Superman, and people still haven't gotten over Man of Steel. Yeah. This means all the More than a decade later. Yeah. But it's okay because humor turns into her. And, and by by the way, f somehow Cubert doesn't get whisked away, and Cubert can transform in into sexy barbarian lady. Yeah, Johnny, we're not making Doug's not making any of this up. This is Why? actually stuff that happens in the movie. This is a real thing mm -hmm. that was actually in the movie. And if if Adam Sandler had made the Last Jedi. If, imagine that that's that that was written and directed by Adam Sandler, and he played DJ, right? He would have been crucified. This is so blatantly lazy. That oh even God! Sandler himself shrugs off how little this makes sense, but doesn't give a shit. Nobody questions why Hubert suddenly turned to a hot lady. Oh, well, who cares? We just wasted millions of dollars in Doom video games. Why was his voice dubbed over there? I did it. I have asked what thousands of writers have tried to. Yeah! Why are you humping the ray gun, Doug? Um, I mean, Sonic the, he the, he the, he the Hedgehog later. ended up re revived it. Yeah, they'll oh, be yeah, temporary yeah. dead. They actually did that, by the way. We really did that. We're kind of fucking insane. Yeah, London-based anti-piracy firm Enturin International, acting on behalf of Columbia Pictures, a subsidiary of Sony Pictures Entertainment, sent takedown notices to video-sharing site Vimeo, alleging several... Films containing the word pixels in their titles infringed on Columbia's copyright. Everything did that. And yeah, they yep. did that all over the place. We know what you want. We're so not behind the times. And that was Pixels, one of the most hated films of the year. Is it one of the worst, if not the worst? I think worst it was the hate most hated movie of the year. Together? It's not even close, really. There are so many other films that he's had a hand in that have tried less and accomplished less than this has. There was one or two neat effects, and every 20 minutes, maybe I had a little bit of a laugh. It, which is more than they I can say got the creator of Pac-Man in this so, movie. Why is there so much hate? Why does this yep. just so fucking And they wasted off? him? Because it's 20 fucking 15. The fact that Sandler is still using these lazy gimmicks with no changes is Actually, just I think they had an insult. They had the creator of Pac-Man like in it in humor, like which is totally not the role because they had him let me let me, let me try and remember here here cuz I'm I'm going to actually I'm going to I can't look this up right now because um um what you're if I to do remember. if I do I remember I'm what he did my bit rate again and but like they had a guy playing the creator of Pac-Man and then the actual creator of Pac-Man had a cameo Mm -hmm. And both of those were fucking stupid. But, uh... Even though it was weird, there was some form of effort being put into his work before. Here, it's like $110 million... Yeah, the stupid product. fucking we gamer jumpsuits, yeah. Well as all the people here can be both talented and funny. But as so many comedians are trying to evolve and adapt with the times, Sandler seems bizarrely disinterested in getting better. I think we're angry because we want to like Pixels. Just regurgitating like standard Stanley Hollywood Stanley. bullshit is pretty much just not only bad, but feel only does, and, and that's bad. that's what Disney's doing these days too. Waking up after all these yeah, just just so want that that film wasn't. I wouldn't Let's say. Step up our games. Step up yeah. our jokes. Step up our characters. This is the tipping point where people are just saying enough is enough. 
Give us effort again. Give us energy. Give us something that feels fresh and Rest new. in peace, Bob Similar Barker. To the first surreal time that we've ever encountered. <clears throat> Until then, we still have the Sandler app, and hopefully there'll be a day where it's that no GPT's prototype. In any of his films. I'm in Instead, the rest of Hollywood adopted that. Come back. I never left. Not you! <laughs> <laughs> What the hell? That was a good review. Yeah, I don't think he missed anything. I... Yeah. Yeah, I think we could fit Batman v Superman in here. Yeah, because we've only been you. going for about an hour and a half. <clears throat> All right, so mm. let's do BVS. Oh, then I can tell you guys got a lot to say about this. Oh, we're okay. probably gonna we're probably gonna pause more in this than we have in the rest. Of it. Okay, so yeah, I can tell. This was so this was his review with Angry Joe. Oh, on Batman v Superman. And fun fact: a joke from the Digimon movie review comes in yeah. there's a bit at the beginning of that review where. Joe says that he wants a Joe signal in the sky. <laughs> what comes up at the beginning of this? A Joe <laughs> signal. <laughs> yeah. By the way, if you want to find our coverage of Nostalgia Critic and Angry Joe's Man of Steel review, go check out Comics for All. You can yep. also find some comic reviews that we did over there as well. Joe's. Well, Joe still makes videos. Yeah. I think it's mostly. You ready? Joe is a tool these days. Joe looks a lot more yes. like Joaquin Broden than he used to. Max Snyder. Hello, Walter Benaziak. Oh, hey guys. What's up? Well, that's just plain rude. If you're gonna do that, you need to roll your knuckles across your hand. Oh yeah, by the way, we're skipping the um clipless review of uh what what you call it? And uh Mad Max Fury Road for right now cuz I haven't because seen that have... film. Yeah, because yeah, because no, neither of us have seen the movie, so you do have you guys haven't? It's a good movie. Oh yeah, no, I, I, saw... I believe you. Alex, I believe I saw the actress who voices Sailor Jupiter in Sailor Moon. So, huh. what do you think of right our there. Amanda Selene Miller. We accomplished what Marvel did in Which, by the way, Amanda Selene Miller was a fan of Nostalgia Critic before she cameoed in that in Super Jupiter Ascending. Oh, cool. What? I thought you liked it. No! Kinda. Well, then you did like it? No. Kinda! Well, then what's the problem? People have been waiting years to see this team up. Three yeah, years. My opinions on the People movie. have only been waiting so three years. out here right now. This is arguably the most anticipated granted, comic book movie of no, 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 granted. It, uh, it was three years too long. The film was originally supposed to come out in 2015. Yep. But they fucking that's delayed it. Out in the, that's pointed out in um, Doug's Man of Steel review. Yeah. And um, the, the funny thing is, Bat like Batman v Superman... Uh, was under development for several years. At one point in time, it was supposed to be, uh, it was supposed to be Brandon Routh and um, Christian Bale. Christian Bale. But uh, that didn't happen. In that people nope. had been waiting to see it even before it was announced. And then it was supposed to be Henry Cavill and Christian Bale, and then it, you know, wound up being the there one we got with Ben Affleck. Where Batman and Superman are together, as well as cartoons, but. Despite there being tons of Batman and Superman movies, they yeah, were supposed to make one with them together. They were supposed However, to make Justice League films. To be exceptionally successful. Didn't do that. Uh -huh. It was time to throw their hat into the ring and use this as a means to start their own DC cinematic universe. Despite with a very strong opening. Hey Alex, why don't you tell me how well that cinematic universe is going right now? Um, well, the last film got released uh like two months after it was in theaters, and uh Nobody talked about it, nobody cared about it, nobody liked it, and the lead actress uh, tried to kill her husband, so, you know, that's great. And and, and has a history of being a wife beater. Yes, I said wife right, beater. You mean... You mean... I, I am talking about Amber Turner. Yeah. 
Okay, so the here they say that that Batman v Superman dropped sixty eight percent. Yeah, these days the following weekend. Guess what? These days that's not a fucking problem because there's no. like seventy five, eighty percent drop offs after the first weekend still these made, days. Still made nearly a billion. Yeah, Batman v Superman was a uh, so fun fact. Batman v Superman and uh, Spider Man into the Spider Verse were both uh, long runners in the theaters. They picked up more as time went on. Uh, they didn't have great openings. And they both did really well on home video to the point where Batman v Superman is still in the top of the Amazon charts today. They've and by the done way, like um, six different re-releases of the film because they keep selling be, it. And people will still rub in the fact that Captain America Civil War were made, a bill, made over a billion. Uh, but here's Captain the America thing. Civil Captain America War... We'll get to that. Relax. But here's and here's the thing. Captain America Civil War. I really like that movie. But the thing is, is that it's part of an ongoing successful cinematic universe. So obviously it's going to make. Yeah, I was I was going to say like that film is it was the first film of phase three. (gasps) Excuse me. Phase three, the MCU. It was a big crossover film. Excuse me. This was the second film in the franchise. It made yeah. more money even after uh, adjusting for inflation than the Incredible Hulk did. Yep. Eh. Anyway, and let's keep going. Batman and Robin second weekend had a sixty-three percent. Yeah. Drop. Yes. Okay. So, oh, this is not a great comparison. The '90s were a completely different time period than Era. this. People were not like people didn't go to watch movies in theaters as much, even like. God, it's been eight years since BVS came out. Yep. Wow. That means more people... Feel also, old. Um, Batman v Superman gonna... made more money than Batman and Robin did. Went back to see that film rather than Batman vs. Superman. You're wrong, Doug. Heck? You've done the math You're wrong. Done, Zach. All right, well, why You've done the you math completely me? wrong. You fucked right. it up. Uh, wait, wait, why do you have like a... a few minutes for Batman Begins? Exactly! What? Oh. Showing a flashback we've seen done so much. I'm surprised there's Looking no up on Rotten Tomatoes right now. It's still at 63% on audience okay. score and tomato meter. Rate okay, so guys, if we cut out the scene of of the Waynes getting killed at the start of the film, back then they were working on all kinds of stuff. We would have gotten a Flashpoint film starring um Jeffrey Dean Morgan. We would have got and um, what's her name? Fucking, I don't remember her, but the the, the other girl from The Walking Dead had like like we would have gotten in a Flashpoint film with him as Batman and her as the Joker, or we would have gotten in um, uh, a fucking in Batman solo film. There was all kinds of shit going into this. Like it's not pointless. Stop saying this is yeah. fucking pointless. Like, it's set up for things that happen in this movie and things that were supposed to happen later in the franchise. Like, it's... Yep. And they they didn't because DC is run by fucking idiots. Wait, hold on. Yeah, how did that skip? Why did you have him shooting guns randomly? He was unarmed in that scene. Being destroyed by it's mostly to make fun of the fact that Batman uses guns in this movie. Why? Yeah, he used guns before. That's not how the scene goes down in the film, Doug. Nope. Like, he, he gives the order for evacuation, and then he starts evacuating, but then right away. Zod, then Zod, like, fucks up the building. I'll be right back. Hang on. You can keep playing. I can still hear it. Okay. Oh, wow. Good thing you I... called me. I never would have looked out the window to notice that. Oof. I will avenge you, man. The audience barely knows. As well as all the lives we're only now in. Okay, so I still haven't. Hang on. Hang on, I still haven't. I haven't left. Um. So, Doug has cut out some things here, and granted, um, you know, the, the extended edition, ultimate edition, added a bunch of context to this scene, but, uh... The like, original version, though. In the original ver- the little girl was still in the original version. Or 
Bruce, like, there's just extra scenes of, of him. Like, the, the little girl. Yeah, was, we're judging the original he, version. I know, but that was still in the original. Like he, he, the little girl where he asks her where her, where her mom is, is, and she points to the ruined tower where it's like, like the, the dead banker guy got vaporized. Uh-huh. Doug, yeah. please be accurate. This didn't happen yes. in the movie. Flash forward a year anyway. later, as thank God Lois figures out Clark Kent is Superman. Did you see Metropolis Lives Matter? I'm I'm gonna go now. I'm gonna be right. I'm. Please comment on the fact that that joke was but an angry Joe should know better. What? The Metropolis Lives Matter. The lives we're only now acknowledging might be Superman's fault. Flash forward a year. The Metropolis Lives Matter. God. So I yeah. Hate that that it's still kind of revel in even now. You know the you know the weird thing is is that the Black Lives Matter movement didn't even get that much traction until 2020 when George Floyd ended up ended up dying. Well here's here's the I thing. Know. The Black Lives Matter thing thing is almost beside the point to what I was gonna say. Hey the fucking Lois Lane has figured out who Superman is joke doesn't make any fucking sense air conditioner on because it's really fucking hot up here right now. Um. Anyways, so yeah, so the Black Lives Matter oh, thing. I, I've written here. some stuff about this that I might wind up turning into a video. Um. But the Black Lives Matter thing um was uh coined around the time of 2012. Uh, around the time of the Trayvon Martin, George Zimmerman thing, and then the Michael Brown thing. Um. So here's the thing. This isn't Superman's fault. If you watch the film which a lot of people apparently haven't done, you can see that he is he's attempting to steer Zod away from, from those buildings. Meanwhile, Zod is basically using his own face as a belt sander. Like, yeah. it's in the movie. You Zod, can, wa- you can yeah, see Zod's it in the, the film. Res- <laughs> yeah, Zod's the one responsible for destroying Metropolis. The, the idea, yeah. like... Batman is the previous film's critics. He's wrong about Superman being responsible for and this. By the way, you could. T- oh, by the way, you can kind of tell, kind of tell that the Metropolis thing was photoshopped in there. Oh yeah, no, that was poorly edited. Lois figures out Clark Kent is Superman. By the way, we've just skipped over the thing that exposed Lex Luthor's whole plan. I hope we get to it later. We'll get to it. We haven't even. We'll get to it when Lex Luthor actually shows up. The, the bodies were still burned in the theatrical cut. They didn't yep. show this. They didn't show everything, but they, like they showed the fucking the shot. The gunshots weren't what people blamed Superman for. The fucking. Oh my God! Did you forget about how oh the the whole scene? You remember the whole scene where they have the fucking hearing, where. The woman says that Superman and like killed all the terrorists and left and caused a big power vacuum that caused a civil war. Did you forget about that, Doug? Clearly. Mm-hmm. Zach, what's that about? Yeah, what's that about? Well, if you can't see how they would mistake Superman shooting people to death. Yeah, who do they think he is, Batman? I don't think I should have to be <laughs> the obvious. Besides. Okay, you know what? That would have been a funny joke if it was accurate, Doug. This leads to a very deep conversation. I just don't know if the world is ready to accept you, or if what you're doing is right, or if it is right, if it's just going to make things worse. Uh, hang on, this isn't the, this, this doesn't, this isn't a conversation that Lois has with Superman. This isn't a conversation that Lois has with Superman in this scene. They, she, he asks if she's okay, and then they pork. Yeah. And that's, he asks if she's fine, and he's concerned about her. (laughs) He's worried about his fucking girlfriend, Jesus Christ. I just and, I'm standing in the wait. Pause. Pause. And to think, this scene, this is how John Kent was conceived. <laughs> uh, Keep that in mind. Well, this is, is a... how John Kent was conceived. There is... Well, how did how did you come into existence? Uh, well, um, my mom and dad flooded the apartment. Uh, 
because two people can't fit in a bathtub that size. Okay. Discussing some very important issues. Hmm. But I'm standing in the bathtub. Eh, good point. But it looks like one of the people intimidated by soups is Lex Luthor, played remarkably without an apology by Jesse Eisenberg. Hey, Mr. Senator Man, look what I got. A shiny green rock that can weaken Kryptonians. I'll let you have it if you give me access to Zod's ship. You hey. So what? No, no, that's not, the, that's not the gist of the conversation. Oh, oh, by the way, Star Trek panels in the background, that's neat. Um, but seriously, that's not the gist of the conversation. He's trying to get the fucking, he's trying to get an import permit because it's a radioactive mineral. That's yeah. in the film, Doug. Uh-huh. He has to get... Even in the theatrical cut. He needs access to the fucking... <laughs> he wants to use... He fa they found samples of kryptonite at Ground Zero in Metropolis because it's one of the minerals that powered the Black Zero. Right? Right? Okay. Hey, glad we're... Glad we're caught up on this because a piece of radioactive material can be used as fuel. I'm I'm not bitter about this because people jumped up my ass about this in my in the reviews for Two Men in the Sky or anything. No, I'm just saying, hang like like it's a so a, a piece of radioactive am to, material. Alice, am I gonna have to go through all those reviews again to find those people? Uh, you can if you want to. I'm not gonna go like I can I could screenshot them for you. But there were so many people who bitched at me <laughs> over that. Okay. But okay. Not you, that specifically, okay, just, but like okay, the just screenshot. Just yeah. screenshot to me. Seem completely unbalanced. Why would anyway. I have access to any of that? Because I've got Jolly Ranchers. Wait. That's not the. That's not. That's not the point of this exchange. We. A shiny green rock that can weaken Krypton. We fucking bright. You if you give me access to Zod's ship. You seem completely unbalanced. Why would I give you access to any of that? Because Why I Jesse Eisenberg? This isn't... This, this isn't Jerry. the guy. Jerry. But... This would be... Unfortunately, people have actually made this criticism before. Or seriously. Yep. In serious context. And I have no idea yep. how, why... How or why. Because it just... It's, it's not... It's not a... Th this isn't how that scene went down. He's tr yep. he he's trying to lobby the senator or uh, Senator Elastigirl about this, and the assistant guy is the guy uh, who he's basically he like he's he's kind of going and past her, and uh, you know working some kind of underhanded Washington nonsense. You know, like the yeah. By the way, Wonder Woman's in this movie. Hello. Wonder Woman's in the movie. Oh, hi, Wonder Woman. Yeah, but that's not Hello. how she was seen in the film. Why was she? Here? Okay, so what's the problem? I'm sorry, Malcolm. That was painful. First, Jesse Eisenberg. Second, if Superman took down military satellites trying to track him, he didn't take down a satellite that was a fucking predator drone, dumbass. Yeah. Why the uh -huh. hell did he take Zod's ship? Away that's not Zod's that ship. Good. That's his ship. The Black Zero doesn't exist anymore. Also, he's trying to play nice with the fucking government. Do you think that he'd be... Like, Star Labs studying Superman's shit is a big part of the fucking comics. Do you think that it would be... Like, it's a, it's an alien spacecraft that landed in Metropolis, one of the biggest cities on Earth. Do you really think that it'd be a great idea for him to say, No, I'm taking this back to the North Pole. You guys can't study this. No, it wouldn't. No. Weapon from Krypton. You know, Alex, it's missed opportunity. He, Emil Ham if Emil Hamilton had survived, I think he would be a, be a major player in Superman's narrative throughout. Yeah. Not like he was in, in Superman the Animated Series, but that yeah, kind of also helps with the fact that I kind of enjoyed his character up till yeah. Justice League Unlimited. Quite, it's quite unfortunate, but... Uh. Anyway. Third, Jesse Eisenberg. Four... Jesse Eisenberg. What? That's not a complaint. That's not a valid argument, Joe. Or, there's no reason for Luther to hate Superman here. He literally explains the, the, the fucking issues that he has with Superman. There was no big man in the sky who to save me from from all the bullshit that he dealt with in his life. The, he's suspicious of men with power. He thinks that people can't be. This all, is some. This is. This he is explains something that's literally his motivations directly to Elastigirl in this film. Alex, Alex, that's also something that 
when even BCAU Superman or Lex Luthor is like, I, he doesn't like the idea of somebody having, having all these powers, but and not someone he can directly control yeah, bring, and coerce. Yeah, to bring all this back to to uh, Kanye West, no one man should have all that power. Here in the comics and movies, exactly. Superman foils his evil mm -hmm. plans constantly. Right. Okay. So um. Okay, so Superman being a superhero and being a powerful good guy and Lex Luthor being a super villain, Lex sees that he's probably going to come into conflict with this guy at some point in time, so he might as well do it on his own terms. Like, yeah. that's not... You don't have to have a big brain to understand that, you know? So it makes exactly. sense to try to kill him. But in this movie... It I mean, hell, that was the kind of the point of the Lexo Skell. Yeah, which was supposed to be in this film and was in the entirety of the toy line. Got cut. Because somebody because, yeah, at Warner Brothers leaked WB, the script. Because clearly WB is full of people who are ingenious. Yeah. Absolute as, and cowards not, and great at wasting money. Yeah. And are slowly going bankrupt. Yeah. Although they have enough yep. money to go through with a new season of fucking Velma. It's from Superman, as he said he has contracts to rebuild with or without hate watching. His motivations I am not watching that. Backward. Well, like everyone. He doesn't. I don't care what... Lex doesn't. If I'm not I mean, mistaken, how... Lex didn't For say that he had contracts to rebuild Metropolis. Yeah, and then there's also tie-in comics where Lex, Lu where someone is like, "Oh, you're gonna be like a big, a big hero like Superman." Lex, is like, "Oh, I won't be anything like him. Nothing like him." For... For... I'm, I've seen this movie many times. I don't remember him saying anything about, "Oh, I'm gonna rebuild Metropolis." I don't remember that. Kevin, do you remember that? No, I don't I don't think that was in the film, dog. Superman's massive power and ability to destroy. He makes Doomsday later. Yes, okay, so he makes Doomsday as as a method of killing Superman. Guys, you remember that? Should Bat should Batman fail, this is his backup. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like his his first plan was not fucking Doomsday. His that was his backup plan. The backup. I don't plan... think I'd want the morbid image of Lex Luthor having sexual relations with Doomsday. I did not have. <clears throat> Allow me to put on my best Clancy Brown impression. I did not have sexual relations with that Kryptonian rock monster. That's like five Supermans with a fist for a brain. And what was that other thing? Oh yeah, oh. Jesse Eisenberg. Huh? Not a valid argument. Jesse Eisenberg is a very good actor. Jr. Yes, he is. Yes, he is Lex, Lex Jr. He, they literally say that. beyond awkward performance. No, it's Even not. Corneas, Lex is a powerful, charming, diabolical man. Okay, and yet you used a picture of Gene Hackman where the character was at his most laughable. Mastermind. He always had a cool attitude, a business-type mindset, and a suave, calculating demeanor. Right. Like Roger Rabbit if he was a super villain. I've seen this comparison before too, and frankly, I don't get it. But at least he introduces Clark Kent to Bruce Wayne. Yeah, but really this guy doesn't. But I'm gonna be honest. Jesse Eisenberg oh, doesn't feel like Lex Luthor here. By the way, by the way, there was also a uh, skit from um, Jimmy Kimmel Live, where Jimmy Kimmel <laughs> discovered that Batman and Superman were who they were. I think it was yeah, the funniest thing he produced that. in years at it that was. point. Yeah, I think I showed you guys Superman, that thing. Really no reason Superman should hate Batman. So nice to meet you. Okay, granted, that is a that is an issue that was only in the theatrical version. Yeah. Yeah, in the theatrical because, version. Because, because they remember cut Ultimate. a bunch of Superman scenes out of the theatrical version, even though he's one of the two build characters. Great yeah. fucking job, guys. Bruce Wayne. Thanks, Warner Brothers. I hear Batman is trampling on civil liberties, making people live in fear, thinking he's above the law. Ah. I'm working with the law, except for the fact that Man of Steel was all about him cooperating with the military. 
He turned himself into the military. He worked with the military to take down the Black Zero. And the world yeah. engine. Eh, just gonna yep. ignore that. Is that the toll is that the, the supposed death toll from Metropolis? Because that's not his fucking fault. Mm. I hear Superman is powerfully dangerous, putting tons of people in harm's way, and there's even a 1% chance that he's unstable. He must be destroyed. That was ex an exchange that Wait, 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 Alex, 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 Alfred. Alfred. Wait, no, wait, 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 no, hold up. Let it play. Let it play. Uh God, no. Lucas. 9.25490. I don't know oh, how much that is. It's 2.7 million that's people. Nine think he's... That's 9 billion, 254 million, and 902,764. Uh, that's more people than exist on Earth now, much less back when this m review was made. Yep. By the way, this is not a, uh, an exclusive criticism of this version of Batman either. Or there's uh, God knows how many people who have, have either been seriously injured, maimed, or killed by Batman in previous versions. By the way, Wonder Woman's in this yep. movie. Hello. Oh, hi, Wonder Woman. Howdy, boys. God, I love bringing people together. This reminds me of the time that I ended up... Who's a pipsqueak? That's Lex Luthor. No. Why does... Does he hey, ever shut up? Joe, why are you doing a bail impression? I don't know. Let's ask him. <laughs> you know what? That's not a bad joke. See you later, boys. Smoking! That would have been funny if it was accurate. No, that's my department. Eh. Yeah. I want most people to look at me and say he was such a good Batman he could do most of it in his sleep. So I do most of it in my sleep. In fact, what? this is a dream sequence right now. No kidding. <laughs> you characters, things you don't understand yet, so they must be clever. Wonder Woman wasn't in that sequence. The Flash. What? I just don't know, Commissioner Alfred. I just feel like the motivations what? of the next film are being figured out before the motivations of this film. Let's do not get me grandchildren anytime soon. <sighs> not this again. Yes, this again. It gets even weirder when Batman is chasing down some guys. Oh, hey, they actually have the toy. And Superman stops him right in his tracks for pretty much no reason. Well, by only weakness that can kill you. I hate you. Why? Because you're a vigilante. You're a vigilante. I hate you because you're responsible for a ton of deaths. You're responsible for a ton of deaths. That's ridiculous. I value human life much more than you ever will. That would have been funny if it was <laughs> accurate. You do remember that the guys <laughs> that Batman and was seriously injuring here are all hired hired goons for Lex Luthor, right? Criminals? Yeah, and I know we were playing Arkham City. People, Arkham who, people who, who don't hold human life in any kind of regard. Just stop hypocriting where I'm hypocriting. Go back to Gotham. <clears throat> it's literally across the street. Tell me something. Do you believe? We're cool, we're cool. Yeah, that's what I thought. Listen, detective, yeah. if I'm so... Okay, let's let's put it this way. Superman, when he hears that threat, do you bleed? He's just like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. Whatever, I'm out of here. Not a like, great he characterization here, Doug. Yeah, uh, Superman just shrugs off that threat like it's nothing, because at first, <laughs> what does Batman have that Superman... And going to be vulnerable to, and then oh, we what? thought, nope, yeah. and that's why Super Batman went out of his way to go get the kryptonite. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Superman just happened bit, to stop him. The bit rate dropping, our transmission bit rate it is going down, even though we're only at one percent. Transmission bit rate is still in the red, even though we have. I'm not. I'm not going to fucking question this. We're just going to keep going. going Bloodthirsty as you say I am. Why haven't I killed you already? Point. Because I intimidate you. Boo. That's actually not a bad homemade Batman costume. You never answered me. Do you bleed? You will. What did you say? Nothing. Nothing. This joke's going on too long, Doug. He already. 
did that. It was funny. <laughs> yeah. Why didn't you get one of the one of the Batman Begins utility belts? I know that they were still around at this point. I don't know. They were anyway. still selling Superman Returns oh, belts at Halloween stores. By inviting Superman to the Capitol building and then blowing it up, causing people to he, hate him more. What he's not the one who invited him to the fucking Capitol building. He got asked there for a fucking hearing about the fucking and bullshit that happened over in the Middle East. Which was set up by Lex Luthor. Lex Luthor oh. put his fucking girlfriend in danger so that he'd come over there and fuck shit up. But even in the uh, movie, uh, they know he didn't uh, do it. And why would... They know that, yes, they know he didn't do that. That doesn't mean that they don't need to ask him questions about the shit that happened afterwards. This is how congressional hearings work. You remember... Yeah, like, and on top fucking, of that, they... You remember the congressional hearings from Iron Man 2? Think about that. Yeah, and on top of that, that, Superman... On top of that, after Superman ended up saving a bunch of people, they're like, oh, no, you've done enough. We don't want you around here. Yeah, well, like... You know, Cut out of the theatrical version, but you know. When Superman I know. Is a bomb. He doesn't need one. But it's okay because he's scared. No, 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 no. People didn't think that Superman blew up the fucking Capitol building. They thought the the whole point of that was to make make to raise questions about like what the, his limits were. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. If that's present, even the fucking theatrical cut, because Superman starts questioning that himself. He starts wondering, no. like, was I, you know, was I just not looking for it? What was going on? Why didn't I see that? And then if we find out in the, the extended version that it was because Lex Luthor lined the explosive wheelchair with lead. Remember that? Uh. Something I predicted, by the way, and people called me crazy for saying that, and I was There's fucking right. The exile. What, was that Lex's plan? I mean, yes, yes, that's exactly what he wanted. I mean, like, it, the whole point was to get him... get him to question his abilities long enough for Lex to be able to take advantage of it. Lex took advantage yeah. of it so that he could put Superman's loved ones in danger. Why does he make that's just what he does. Then? He doesn't make another Kryptonian. He resurrects Zod's corpse, basically. He tricks the incredibly advanced Kryptonian technology using fake fingerprints and for- No, it's not fake fingerprints. It's Zod's actual fingerprints. He cut them off of Zod. Did you not know how fucking biometrics work? He genetically combined his DNA with that of Zod. We know genetic mutation is forbidden by Kryptonians. But they're all dead. Oh, so Alex, really here's the know. joke. I was talking to you. Your oh. fingerprints convince me otherwise. I'll roll with it. No, no, he wait, says wait. that the Council of Krypton were the ones who made the genetic splicing illegal. Yeah. And then he points out that the Council of Krypton exploded. Are dead. Yeah. And that they don't have to follow those rules anymore. It's not a programmed hard line like C-3PO not being able to read the Sith language. No. <laughs> Uh. Boy, don't you wish this is how all advanced technology worked? This phone is password protected. Yeah, but the guy who owned it died. Oh, okay. Here's all his info. Jackpot. Uh, so, fun fact, you can usually find contact information on the lock screen of most phones. My phone, for instance, if I were to look on the lock screen right now, pulls up my home phone number in case somebody finds it after it got lost. You can usually find, like, the name of the person who owned it, uh, who owns it, and, uh, contact information, maybe even a fucking mailing address for some people, if you want to put it on there. Yeah. That's, you know, let's, and, and fun fact, you can hack a computer to make it do fucking anything. Oh, hey, whose phone is that? Ah, uh, it's yours. What? Uh, hey, give me that. Ooh, look at all the Spartan porn. I don't need this. I'm friends with Christopher Nolan. So while in exile, Clark comes across his dead father building a snow fort. This is either because A, he's a ghost, 
He's a ghost. Hallucinating. C, more consistent Kryptonian technology. Or D, if this is really your biggest question through all of this, you're on Quaaludes. No, no okay, so the, it was fucking, it was a fucking ghost. Like, there are ghosts in the DC universe. There have been ghosts in the DC universe for a very long time. Yeah. I mean, dead man. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, there's you know, a superhero like... in DC whose power is being a dead, dead ghost. As opposed to a living ghost, but, you know. Danny Phantom's a living ghost. Not up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Meanwhile, Luther's men sneak hard. Hold on. Also, by the way, I have to uh, I have to say something here. So, Pa Kent explains that like sometimes your heroics have unintended consequences. That's that's the whole that's the whole point of of this fucking movie. Like like the the story that he tells Clark is about how how like he diverted a flood from the Kent farm from and then that went down on and and it overwhelmed the lang place down the road he was like he thought he was being a big hero and he was being a big hero where he was but down the line it it caused unintended consequences yeah the whole point of the conversation we were having about the fucking shit that happened earlier at the in the middle east you remember that yeah. All that? Or the, uh, See, more consistent anyway. Kryptonian technology. It's, it's not Kryptonian it's technology. Really Hawk Kent was never not, uh, imaged okay. by the Meanwhile, fucking Luther fortress the way... Oh, oh, don't worry. This happens all the time. I brought my own chloroform. No, it happened once. And she wakes up on top of Lex's building. <gasps> Hello, my dear. Aha! I knew it! Through my journalistic skills, I figured out it was you. Thus completing yeah, and... incredibly essential. You completely cut out the part where she went and talked to Martian Manhunter about the fucking bullet. Wait, what you Sonic, what are you saying? Oh, I said nothing. Oh, uh, yeah. He, he, she went and she got Harry Lennox to trace the bullet back to LexCorp, which is. Yeah. You're there. Nobody else would have figured that one out. You really solidified yourself as a necessity there. You know what I was doing while you were figuring out that incredible info? Figured out who Superman was. Figured out who Batman was. And I planned two kidnappings to take place on the night that he was planning to finish him off. See? See? There you go. And you know what the best part is? I did all of that. Yes, okay, so that's not a coincidence. He he planned all this stuff. He literally set it up so that Batman could get a hold of the kryptonite. He set the whole thing up. The fact that Batman yeah. didn't get a hold of the kryptonite... Right, the first time was literally it was because Superman intervened. He would have had it the first time. Yeah. The whole thing was set up so that he could get the kryptonite to Bruce Wayne without Bruce Wayne thinking that Lex Luthor was the one who was giving him this stuff. It was to keep him out of Bruce Wayne's suspicions. Because Batman is the world's greatest detective. It's in the film. Off screen. So even I don't know how I did all this impossible shit. Happen off screen. That, Phew, is it chilly here? Or is that just the cold uselessness of your character? Uh -uh. Why is he putting on a purple oh. jacket? Is he about to... Hey. Is, he gonna is he going to put on a green wig? Is he going to... Thank you! I really am important! It's over, Luther. Your mama said I have the high ground. Man. No, but she will when I slit her throat. <laughs> now go kill Batman because I think it'd be cool. Okay. That's a good point. That wasn't the conversation they had, but whatever. Marfa, something, something, Marfa, Marfa. Sorry, Sonic, I couldn't hear you. You were a little bit muffled. What'd you say? I said he said something about Marfa, Marfa. Oh, yeah, that. I'll kill you for that! Eh? Eh? Pretty high drama, huh? Orc, isn't this it? Isn't this what you've always wanted to see? Yeah, it's what we've always wanted to see, but not why we wanted to see it. We want to see Batman and Superman fight because they why have does... different ideologies that we I can't enjoy. remember what comic it's this is from. Batman has a Green Lantern ring. Hopeful. Seeing two points of view yeah. that are different, but we identify Actually, with Actually, hang on. What? Is... Hang on, we've got to back this up here. It's deep and conflicting drama. Dark and aggressive, the other is kind. Okay, we've gone over this, but Clark doesn't listen. He thinks nothing can touch him. I have to remind myself Bruce is a little older. He knows, he thinks he knows everything. 
Okay, so, um... Hi, New52, um... If I'm not mistaken, uh, Batman was actually younger than Superman at this point in the comics by about two years? Uh, assuming that I'm not mistaken, and I haven't gone back and reread the New 52 recently, uh, they probably have a bunch of continuity issues. Does, of course, they do. I've been hopeful. Seeing two points of Okay, this is... Okay, so all of this is bullshit here, by the way. Hey, this is the New 52 in a nutshell here. Because they should not be calling each other by their fucking names on the comms. This is why whenever I write things like this, I have characters refer to each other by code names if they don't have public secret identities. ...view that are different, but we identify with go head and head is deep and conflicting drama. But Superman is fighting to save his mom, and Batman is fighting because he pretty much does what he does. It's not an epic fight if the motivations Batman. are weak. It is Ugh, Batman was fighting because he thought Superman was a threat that could turn on the world at an instant and destroy it. Not like yeah, he was wrong. wrong. Gizmo says kryptonite ring. Yeah, okay, so that's fair. Also, yeah, he completely left out the fucking, um... The scene with the Flash? That told, yeah, like, but... like, cause... Do you remember all that? Cause the, the nightmare scene is the vision of the future of what'll happen after Darkseid gets a hold of the, um, the anti-life equation and uses it to dominate Superman's mind. And, once... Once all of that's in place, the Flash traveled back in time and was telling... Um, was trying to convey, uh, future Bruce... Uh, future Bruce's message to past Bruce... Granted, this is all shit that we have to surmise now because that movie got fucking shit-canned. But anyways, um... That whole conversation and is just completely gone. And I know there are a bunch of people who we talked about this during our, our watch through of uh, Batman v Superman, but there were a lot of people who were confused about that. Thought that the fucking Flash came to him in a dream. Didn't catch the fact that the papers were flying around in the background when Bruce woke up again because that's how fucking dreams work. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah oh, no, uh... People. <clears throat> yeah. So basically what what people did there is they forgot how their own sleep patterns work the literal definition of force yeah but isn't it so cool the way batman swings him around like a yo-yo that happens at the yeah. end of the fight and isn't it cool the way superman punches him across the building yeah. yeah and wasn't it cool when batman sprayed him with kryptonite gas or just minutes later he could stab him with a kryptonite spear wait a minute why didn't he just stab him with the spear first yeah, this that would work, have worked because well Superman would have seen it coming. Batman just stab him as his first move. Okay, so uh, hi, I have a black belt. The more that you, the the sooner that you see an attack coming, the easier it is to defend against it. Yeah. Just just you wanted to point that tonight. out. If you bring out the big gun immediately, I can see where it is and fucking move. And the reason why he everyone probably attack. Excuse me. If if Superman had seen the fucking spear, he probably would have just excuse me. He probably would have said, "Oh, this guy's this guy's trying to fucking kill me and has a potential to do it." And he might have just lasered his fucking head off. We don't know. And uh, well, frankly, I mean, that would have been fair. Mess, fine. Like if I even if I'm I'm as if I even if I'm Superman and I see this guy, I mean, this guy's got a fucking kryptonite kryptonite martial weapon and then he's gonna try and kill me with i don't care who this guy is i'm staying in the fuck away i'm gonna i'm gonna take some some potentially drastic measures you know yeah mm -hmm. that batman's batman's a, a great fighter he's a smart fighter he didn't like nothing was wasted here I, uh, well look aquaman to the movie hello answer the question why didn't you dress okay, malcolm up as aquaman I'm cool. Eh, I mean, not like Aquaman's gonna be in this they much. See them fighting, no. They don't experience them fighting. It, what? You just watch two people fight. Hell, you can just take two strangers, put them. Why did the guy on the left looks kind of like Dean Kane? In Batman and Superman costumes and have them do cool stuff. But if you're constantly questioning why throughout the whole thing, you're not experiencing it. You're constantly being distracted by elements that don't add up. 
But perhaps you didn't hear me. Aquaman to the movie! Hello. What? Cyborg? No, Zach. No. What about the Flash? The Flash is more important than... Wait. Than... You couldn't... Hang on. Why didn't you paint the... Why didn't you paint the spear green? Go down to Lowe's, buy a can of green spray paint, Doug. They cost like two bucks. What would you say? Yeah, can hear this. Oh my god. My mother's still alive. No, you I don't know whether I should laugh at that joke or groan. Frankly, it's it's decent, but it's not it's not what I'd call great. <laughs> have the same name. This instantly erases all hatred. From now on, no, it doesn't. And then the internet okay, and so, it's the, we okay, had to deal so, with that joke for uh, literally a year straight. There's there's a couple of there's a couple of things I have to explain about this. First off, a lot of people act like this is a change that Zack Snyder et al. made for the film. No. Martha Wayne and Martha Kent have had the same name for about eighty years. I did the fucking yep. research. I'm a fucking comic book nerd. I knew this. Apparently a lot of other people didn't. A lot of other people don't actually read comics and still complain about shit that's in the movies that's from the fucking comics. Like, I this don't is read a comics and even I, and I even I could just look it up. Like, it, yeah. So this is, this is kind of a, a shorthand for shared humanity. Like Batman realizes that Superman isn't just some guy... Like, he, he has a connection, and he realizes that the roles have kind of been reversed. Like, the whole, the whole way that this is framed is, like, like you've got Lois standing over... We've gone over this in the fucking watch-through that we did of the movie. We're, we're just gonna... You and I will be best friends. No, no, okay, so she threw the spear away because it was... She threw the spear away because it was Man. making Clark sick. Because it's made out of kryptonite. It wasn't a good yeah. thing to have. He didn't think they'd need it. In demo. In demo. I'll just go and grab that then. Ba <gasps> This is out of order. So, yeah, I was going to say, so the sequence of events here has been changed because if this happened in the film, film Batman could have gone and gotten the spear and they would have not had the whole fucking thing that they... What is this, like the fourth time? I'll save you... No, it's the third time it's happened in this film. Lois, and I'll yeah. grab the spear, which is the only thing that weakens me. I'm important! Yeah, you used to be. And I'm Batman. <sighs> Haha, I've done it! I've created the ultimate Kryptonian devil! Candy? Oh! Out of my face! Why is your spirit all over my face? What's going on here, Lex? I thought you hated Kryptonians. Now you've made an- No, it's not a matter of Kryptonians. It's a matter of- I hate to say this, but it all comes back down to a matter of power and responsibility. <laughs> Another one. Your plan makes no sense. You don't get it. Oh, I he's turning into- He the literally is turning into the Joker. The bell is You're portraying Lex Luthor right now. Let's Lex. Not, wait till you see how well we Okay, so Lex wasn't doing that at this point in the film. In fact, Lex almost got killed by fucking Doomsday at this point in the film, but they cut it out of the movie. Yeah. Understand Doomsday. Doomsday? Yes, we wrote him so he's a combo of Lex and Zod's DNA, creating. Roar, roar. I am your Doomsday. <laughs> I will find him. Is that what Doomsday looks like? Oh, what did you expect? A monster evolved from cloning thousands of alien babies dying and being reborn until it created the ultimate killing machine? Like mm. in the comic? Yeah. Well, why yeah. would that look anything like Zod and Luther's goddamn DNA? A combination of Zod and Luther should look exactly like Yeah, I still don't like Zod that part. Where did this double sized, double muscle, I mean... dead dick missing creature come from? In fact, wait a minute. Lex Luthor combining his DNA with Kryptonian DNA to create an uncontrollable monster? That's nuclear man! 
Well, technically, yeah. I technically I think that's Superboy, but yeah. <laughs> also, I, it wasn't it wasn't his DNA that he combined. It it was nuclear power and Clark Kent's DNA. Yeah, that just happens to resemble him. And also, like, you just... and this guy turns into fucking Lex Luger, not Lex oh, Luthor, but you know. Snyder is getting inspiration from Superman Thor. No, he's not. Superman movie ever. That's debatable. One of them. We got Doomsday in the movie. Frankly, I'd rather watch Superman Four than Superman Returns. Jam in this movie. We love oh, these no. that's Cap. Given time to develop. Just because you give them the same name doesn't automatically make them the same character. Oh, you know what? That would be a, a great true. criticism to uh, levy against. Ooh, every DC movie made since Zack Snyder's departure, and also every Phase Five, uh, every Phase Four and Five MCU project, except for. No way, no, home, yeah, man. literally. And multiple. In, in Multiverse of Madness. You know, frankly, you could levy it against them, too, but at least those were entertaining. At least those were well-written. At least those are fucking good. Yeah. Uh, I still think they should use it Tuesday so early. Okay. So after Wonder Woman finally joins the team... Hello. Nope, you stay oh, here. Awesome. Batman has a great idea. We need to lure him into the city towards the kryptonite where all these- And away from the city, towards the abandoned dock! They said this in the movie! Innocent people are. Wouldn't it be easier to bring the easily transportable kryptonite here? <sighs> Don't you- The- Gotham Harbor is abandoned. It is a line in the movie. People complained about it being too overt, and you fucking missed it, Doug! Watch these movies? We don't save people from destruction, we bring it to them. Then Superman has a great idea. I'm gonna sacrifice myself to save us all. Are you sure? Yeah. It was a last second thing. They were running out of fucking options. Yeah. Wonder Woman was about to get thrown across the fucking place and, like, what do you want Batman to do? He shot it with a kryptonite grenade. The last kryptonite grenade, by the way. What no, the Alex, hell else is wanted... left? No, 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 Alex, Alex. Here's the thing. They wanted it to be like the Hishi version where Batman <laughs> grabs the lance and he's like, Because of Batman! Shoots the kryptonite gas and then... And Spears Doomsday. I don't know the way some people fucking talk in this uh, talk about this movie. They almost expect Lois to do the fucking stabbing. And oh yeah, and by the way, um, uh, the Flash does this movie in Man of Steel absolutely no favors because if the Flash was in Metropolis for the Black Zero incident, why wasn't he here? Uh at least in the DCAMU, oh, when this happened, it made sense that, and since Doomsday was reading Flash as he was getting pounded on by I've, I Flash using Hawkman's mace. Yes. Now here's the thing. We can easily say that the Flash was in a different part of the world. If, you know, if, if this is the case. But the, the Flash movie fucks that up so much, but we'll get to that eventually. There's yeah. probably a thousand other ways we can be doing this right now, but no, I'm No, there was one option. There was literally one option left. Wonder Woman uh -huh. did not have the time um, to like put the uh, tie the lasso to something. There's nothing that would have been able to restrain Doomsday that she could have tied that lasso to. And that yeah, the spear is still not home. painted green. Yeah. I'm anyway. Are you sure you're gonna kill him? Because wasn't killing Zod a big deal in the first one? No, no, no. Yeah, but I got over it. We seem to do that a lot. No, he got over it. He... This is... This is the same kind of thing. He has to make a decision. And it's between... In like... <clears throat> it's... It's... Okay, so at this point in time, he... There's a decision here between... In either he can either kill Doomsday and save the world... Or not kill Doomsday and everything dies.
I will also add that Superman stabbed Doomsday, and then and Doomsday stabbed him, and Superman yeah. chose rather than to back up to impale himself further on Doomsday's arm so that he could kill Doomsday, because Doomsday was still alive at that point. Superman dies in the second movie. Well, don't forget, there's even more than that. We use even more Jesus symbolism. Don't worry, we'll get through all the stations of the cross. Yeah. We are sent to jail. See, I have a bald head now. I'm totally Lex Luthor. Why? So okay, do you, you realize you realize that shaving uh, shaving prisoners' heads is something they do, right? Hinting that maybe, just maybe. He'll come back. Thus, we've combined the most famous Batman and Superman stories into one emotional package. Giving I hate how they're putting Zack at the forefront of this like any of this was his decision. Wanted to see. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. he had plans to do a Man of Steel 2 before this happened. But no. <laughs> But no, no, we gotta keep going. We gotta. We can't make individual movies. We have to make team up films early. <laughs> Why are you, you know what I screaming see? like Vegeta? I want to see the Justice League at his funeral, but now I can't. We I do see, see that in the DCAMU. Yeah, yeah but the live action. That is also in the DCAMU. But now I can't. I want to build a connection with this Superman the same way he built a connection with I can't with me say that for the DCAMU, sadly. Yeah, I was going to say, un rather unfortunately, uh, he and Lois got together in that film and got split up in that film. Kind of. <laughs> Want to know the worst part is? The AMU got at least two out of three of those. Yeah, two out of three ain't bad. Hundreds of stories, but now I can't. I want to fear that this might be the time that Superman doesn't make it back. But we're why never gonna would have you do that. We're because never gonna have never... that period. Yeah, like we can't have that at all because want... we know this as comic book is as the comics as as established, which even the the animated and and live action stuff have to follow. At some point, they're gonna bring back these characters because as as viewership yeah, slash readership is gonna go down. It's only a matter of time before a dead character comes back to life. The only character in Marvel Comics that hasn't stayed dead, uh, sorry, that hasn't come back after dying is Uncle Ben. It used yeah. to be, you know, the the saying was, you never, nobody, everybody in oh. comics comes back except for. Uncle Ben, the Waynes, and Jason Todd. And then Jason Todd came back, then the Waynes came back, and Uncle Ben is the only one who's stayed dead across most continuities except 16, 6160. But 6160 oh, then, is a different continuity. It's, oh, then there's also back in the animated series. <clears throat> that was a clone, wasn't it? I don't know. I, I, uh, I don't, still in our anyway. universe. That was in our universe. But now I can't. How many comics were there before Superman died? I don't know. Hundreds! Thousands! Okay. Uh, please make an argument, Joe. And how many movies did you make with him? Two! Two! That's not Zack's fault. That's Warner Brothers' fault. There was a Man of Steel sequel in development, and then they decided that, oh, Batman v Superman has to come first because we're gonna lose ground they to catch up. fucking Marvel. You killed him in two movies, and you barely focused on him you know what i want to see i want to see you earn superman's death this isn't fucking jimmy olsen uh okay so see as, as, as comic fans as yeah, comic agent, fans as... um we have to point out that this is not the first time they haven't earned superman's death joe have you seen a little movie called superman doomsday superman dies yeah. within like the first 10 minutes of that film uh-huh and they half hearted and they did, and they ended up half assing what what the DCAMU oh, properly did it in like two movies. They half assed the entire fucking thing. The Justice League are nowhere to be found. 
the voice cast is so improperly used. It doesn't make any sense. This is goddamn Superman. He deserves your time and respect. Okay, uh, tell that to Walter Hamada and Jeff Johns, please. Tell that to James Gunn. And James Gunn, who, James Gunn, who, by the way, is making a Superman film with, um, like, 20 supporting characters in it, I think. Ditto. <laughs> this movie is trying to be Marvel, The Dark Knight, Wonder Woman, Justice League, The Death of Superman, and Batman... Well, no, it's, it's not trying to be Justice League. It's trying to be... It's or explicitly... It, it's explicitly Dawn... Uh, Excuse me, Dawn, Dawn of, of Justice. Justice. So, in terms of importance in this film, um, in descending order, we have Superman, Batman, and they're roughly tied for importance, although you wouldn't know that if you had only seen the theatrical cut. Wonder Woman, Flash, and everyone the fuck else. I mean, one of those Gizmo says nobody but definitely. Superman was fighting Doomsday and Superman Doomsday when in the comics the entire Justice League was practically fighting him. Yes, that's a good yeah, point to make. Yeah, and another thing... The movie didn't in, have the budget for more than the DC, two leaguers. In the DCAMU, the Justice League it was... All the Justice League was fighting against Doomsday, uh -huh. even if it was a small amount... Even if it was a smaller or than usual Justice League, it still had the Justice League. Yep. It had Superman, and Batman, this... Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, Earned Hawkman, Flash, Aquaman, Cyborg... Yeah. And this at least has... This at least has the Trinity... Versus yeah, Superman. the Holy Trinity. Batman versus Superman would have been more than mm. enough. I mean, they you say Batman v Superman would have been enough, and I understand the thinking behind that. But like, there there are so many films that focus on one thing and do it poorly, and this film focused on a handful of things and did them all pretty good. Like Doug, we've seen. I know you've seen worse films that have a stricter focus than this. I've watched some of your reviews of them. The reason we love so many of the stories that you were trying to fit into this is because each one was its own individual story. So they didn't really f fit in individual stories into this. There were bits taken from each story that inspired parts of this movie. This movie has its own story. You you, I you like have to you have to get over this. this. In the, I like the paneling of this bit from on the on the Dark Knight Returns, but I do prefer how the animated version and adapted that palm strike and removal of the mask. Yeah. The death of Superman wasn't also a prequel to Suicide Squad or the retelling of Dark Knight Returns. I mean, that man still wondering if he Bat left the oven on. Yeah, I was gonna say everybody else is in mourning, and Batman wondering if he left the oven on, but. Like, so you're not explaining why this is a problem, Doug. Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how else to say this. You're, you're saying that there's something wrong without actually explaining why. Yeah. You focused on one story and allowed us to get invested. Sure, you have to compromise a story when it comes to making a movie, but... No, you don't. Um, fun fact, you actually don't have to compromise stories when you're making a movie. Uh, you can make straight adaptations... Um, without changing a whole lot. Like, there's gonna be issues with pacing and whatnot, and you can, and like, adjust things and shift stuff around, and, and try to patch over plot holes whenever you find them, which is good, that's something you should be doing, but you don't have to make... People keep saying you have to make changes when you're, when you're adapting something from one medium to another. That's not really true, and I... I don't know how else to put this. Like, people just don't understand that you can leave things be. I don't get it. Like, uh, Sadly, that's kind of how we got the Judas contract. Uh, yeah. Well, Judas... Because we had... Uh, at least the fucking Judas contract in in the TV show didn't involve of, um 12-year-old Tara banging and Slade Wilson in his 50s. Yeah, and the thing is, with the DCMU at the very least, they kind of aged up, aged her up so that she could have, have at least a, so we could at least reason that she's, it's, you know... It's less, it's slightly less creepy, yeah. 
Sword. It's slightly less creepy, but it's but Terra still being very forward. Hey, that story's so special. Is it worth just squeezing in instead of devoting the time it deserves? Well, I mean, I mean like more like I've Warner Brothers ball. I'm unfortunately like I that it's it's a valid enough criticism to say maybe we should give certain storylines more time to breathe. Hey, I. I actually used to have that that wireless keyboard. I believe it's a Microsoft one. Uh, but that aside, I'd, um, um, I can understand the idea of like, hey, hey, maybe we should give these stories more time to breathe because, um, there are so many comic book movies that take um, like six different story concepts and throw them all into a big blender and try to make it all work, and they don't make it like it doesn't work. And they change a bunch of shit, and it doesn't work, and things like that. But, like, that's that's not the problem here. Like, the problem is, if anything, the problem is that the movie's too short. I don't know how else to put this. So, uh, that's what you really think, huh? Well, I'm sorry that my movie didn't please you in the least. Oh, no, a lot of it was pretty awesome. What? As much as so many of those scenes suck, there's a lot of scenes that are free. Oh yeah, you completely glossed over this, by the way. Freaking amazing! The action, the visuals. You completely glossed over the whole false god narrative, by the way. As Batman, Irons as Alfred. When it did certain parts of the comic right, it was a pretty kick-ass. Certain parts of the comic right. The stuff that you're talking about wasn't in the fucking comic. Stuff that you're showing here, here that wasn't in. The comics that you're talking about. Granted, some of it is from other comics, but you didn't bring up those comics, guys. Like, you can trace the lineage of all of the ideas that went into this movie. And you're not bringing up most of them. You're fixating on Dark Knight Returns and Batman Begins and, and Death of Superman. It's film. So wait, did you like it or not? And at least you guys are half and half on it. I'm glad that I saw it. If you're just looking for Batman and Superman to fight each other, you'll get it. It's just not in a story that makes any sense. It's got a lot of cool scenes uh, that are hard to say not. I've to already said my piece out. about this. So, in a strange way, I'm still recommending it. I suppose that's all over the map, but then again, your movie's all over the map, so I guess it comes full circle. I mean, if you look at the review scores, yeah, it's pretty mixed. Well, you know what, Doug? This is surprising, but Doug was more fair to this film in his review than he than a bunch of other people were. This is amazing. Yeah, how, how did this? How did okay. we've come full circle? Because the Man of Steel review ended this exact same way. If those are your thoughts, yeah. then why did you come all the way out? Oh, like I said. Well, uh, we were thinking that uh, maybe we could write the next one. No. Hey, you know what? It would have been better than Joss Whedon. And, and That's fair. James Gunn. Yep. And and That's fair. Whoever the fucking uh Lancelot sweets from fucking bones on Flash. That is a very violent man. Mm -hmm. What? You didn't even play Why hang on, why didn't you play like sound effects of him punching you guys? Just go, just have him go like, pow, 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 now, ow, 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 like that. You know, I think it's kind of funny if you just leave it silent. <sighs> it should have been a hard like a little snap. I don't know. I guess. Anyway, we hope you enjoyed the, our look at these clipless reviews of Doug Walker. We might do some more for these, who yeah. knows? I, I anyway. sincerely hope that the Twitch upload looks halfway decent oh, because I've been seeing a lot of be drop seeing... frames over on OBS. Yeah, we're just going to... We'll be seeing you guys for, for tomorrow's movie night, which... Moolin. You know, for some Frost reason, I... You know, for some reason, I have in my head an idea, Alex, of you photoshopping a mullet on Mulan. <laughs> 
Her hair uh, is long uh, enough. I don't know if I'd be able to do that. Ah, uh, fuck. We gotta do that. No, no, it's a... badly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. As much as I don't want to, we must. It's at the we'll usual seeing... time this week, so we'll see you guys then. Bye. Bye, everybody.